Let's get ready to rumble! زنا لا يحرم لو واحد زنى بامراه وحملت منه يقول لك ان هذا الماء غير محرم يعني ايه غير محرم؟ يعني دي مش بنته يعني ايه برضه مش فاهم يا عم الشيخ؟ يعني هل يجوز له نكاحها؟ قال لك اه يتجوزها عادي دي بنته قال لك مين اللي قال بنته؟ هي لا بنته لا شرعا ولا شيء ما مش بنته لن تنسب له اصلا ولما واحد يزني بواحده ويخلف منها بنت تكتب باسمه باسم الزاني؟ لا ابدا ابدا يبقى مش بنته يعني قتل المرتد مو عشان يصير مسلم المرتد مرتكب لجرم مثل الزاني الزاني اذا كان محصنا يرجم اذا كان غير محصن يجلد السارق اذا اجتمعت شروط قطع اليد قطعت يده القاتل يقتل فهذه عقوبات هذه عقوبات لهؤلاء العمل الذي قاموا به ومنها المرتد إذا ارتد يقتل إذا تاب من الردة يترك إن هو يعاقب على هذا الفعل أن فيه استهتار بهذا الدين فيعاقب على هذا العمل كما لو سب الرسول أو سب الله جل وعلا أو كذا فإنه يقتل لهذا الفعل وليس لأجل أن نصبه على الإسلام الإسلام يعني لا يحتاج ولا يريد يعني مرتزقة يعني صير مسلم ولا ذبحناك ولا لا لا ما نريد مرتزقه. الكف اول شيء السبي لا يكون الا الكفار. لا يجوز سبي مؤمن. يعني لا يجوز يكون قتال بين مسلمين مثلا لاي سبب من الاسباب، الفتن التي تحدث يكون قتال بين المسلمين لا يجوز السبي ابدا، السبي لا يكون الا للكافر. لا يسبى المسلم ابدا وانما يسبى الكافر، وانا ارجو ان الانسان لا يخجل من دينه. و يقول لا هذا قبل والاسلام لا يدعو الى هذا، لا كن كن قويا في دينك، اظهر دينك. نعم هذا ديني، نعم. الذي لا يرضى ان يعبد الله تبارك وتعالى فانه يستعبد او يدفع الجزيه او يدخل في الاسلام او يقاتل. ه- هذه الاحوال الاربعه ابدا لا يوجد حال خامس. لذا اول ما يدعى الانسان يدعى الاسلام، يقول له اعبد ال- اعبد الله تبارك وتعالى. الله خلقك لتعبده فإذا قال لا أريد أن أعبد الله تبارك نقول تعيش في أرض الله ولا تعبده ادفع الجزية نقول ولن أدفع الجزية فإذا رفض أن يعبد الله ورفض أن يدفع الجزية نقول له إذا ما لنا معك إلا القتال فنقاتله لأجل هذا فإن قتلناه فهو في النار وإن أسرناه فهو من السبي يصير عبدا رغما عنه لما رفض أن يكون عبدا مكرما باختياره فسيكون عبدا حقيرا بدون اختياره هكذا هو الأمر بالنسبة للذين لا يعبدون الله تبارك وهؤلاء يعني لا تشفقوا عليهم هؤلاء كفار هؤلاء يرفضون أن يعبدوا الله تبارك وتعالى يرفضون أمر الله جل وعلا يعادون الله يسبون الله جل وعلا فالإنسان لا تأخذه الشفقة على أعداء الله على ناس هم معتدون. And you have no idea how much I hope Allah is going to curse you to the rest of your life. Nothing, boy. You're finished already. Look at me. Look at me. You know you're done. You are. Ali. Ali. Wallahi, every single land, every single country. Wallahi. With all their governments and all their military force and all their might and all their science and all their money and all their know-how, all with the exception of none, every country, every tree, every grain of sand, every mountain, every river, every ocean, every ocean, wallahi, every star, every
every sun, every moon, every single planet, every single angel, the billions and billions and billions of angels, all of them, with the exception of none, Mikael, Jibrail, Israfil, all the first heaven, the second heaven, the third heaven, the fourth heaven, the fifth heaven, the sixth heaven, the seventh heaven, the ocean above it, the eight that carry the throne of Allah, the hearts of Allah, all are dead, all are dead. Ali. Ali. Hello, we are live on air. Welcome everybody. I hope everybody's doing okay. Welcome. God bless you. How is everybody? Blessings. Welcome. Yes, you heard it correctly. We are live on air. Yeah, you see guys, I uh, created a new intro. I hope it was not too long, you know. <laughs> I really hope that you enjoy this new intro, guys. You know, you know, I put some, you know, some text in it and whatnot. It took me a lot of time to create this, but you know, make things interesting. Hello, guys. Let me say hey to the admins. Hello, our dear brothers in Christ, our beloved admins, TM Crosspoles. We are blessed. Longish of Jerusalem, iPhone 3G, Debit Rye. Maybe uh, other admins will join us later too. Ian Randall, how are you, my friend? Joseph Dunday, Bruno for Christ, how are you, my friend? I hope you're doing okay. Abdul Jel, Sean Guide, hello, my friend, how are you? Walter, another dear brother of ours, welcome. New Life, Romot Machine, Snow Leopard, how are you, buddy? Willie Hendrick. Wow, there are a lot of people here today. What's what's going on, guys? <laughs> hey, Joe Jonas. How are you? Sandra. How are you, Sandra? Andy Shannon. There are a lot of you guys. Sorry if I did not mention your name. Blessings of Christ to all of you, including the Muslims who repeat the curses of Allah at least 70 times a day upon us. Welcome, everybody. Let us start our live show. Before we actually start guys, I want to ask you to pray with me in the name of our Lord and Savior so that our live stream and our beloved audience can be blessed by our Holy Lord, living Lord Jesus Christ. I think it's a good habit, so let us start with a nice prayer. Dear Lord, bless our beloved audience. Thank you for the grace, Lord. We believe as Christians that Jesus is truly risen, and indeed He is risen. Risen is He indeed. Al Masih qam, haqqan qam. That's a historical fact. Lord, thank you for your ultimate gift. Thank you for this grace that saved us from death. And thank you for my lovely audience and subscribers who are always supporting us day in, day out, Lord. Please bless them, their loved ones and families. Please keep all of us healthy and safe, especially from this spread of this coronavirus, Lord. Keep us safe. Father, enfold us in your arms. Help us not to lean on our own understanding, but in everything acknowledge you, Lord, so that you can direct our words, thoughts and actions. Give us a measure of your strength so that we might not give into discouragement, any taqiyya, any makar of Allah, we mean Satan, any lies or any doubt, Lord. Please help us honor you, Lord, in all our ways. Father, I pray to you and ask you to shine your holy light upon all of us, including the Muslims who might be in need and are seeking for the truth, Lord. Please also open their eyes so those poor victims of Islam can be saved like we are saved through the blood of our Holy Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit and loosen my tongue today so I can speak the truth without any error or shame. Lord, give me wisdom and courage to do 
whatever needs to be done. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. Welcome everybody. We are live on air. On this live stream we will have the opportunity today to refute the so-called scientific miracles and facts in the Quran. On top of that anything that we can find today will be used against the Prophet of Islam in the court of law. So we hope that Allah is not asleep again and will be his personal attorney present during today's hearing to defend his prophet in the court of law. My Skype is open guys, my Skype ID is the Arab Christian. If you as a Muslim think you have the courage and the knowledge to call me live on air to refute me, please be my guest. My Skype ID is the Rob Christian. Guys don't forget to subscribe, smash that like button, click on the notification bell to receive notifications when we go live. That's very important these days. Don't forget to click on the notification bell guys. If you want to subscribe to our social media, you can become a member on my Facebook page, a subscriber. And if you want to support our full-time ministry, you can do that through Patreon. Patreon.com slash Rob Christian. Now guys, let us start. One mistake in the Quran destroys Islam. Why? Because if Allah claims to be God, then God can certainly not make mistakes in his Quran, right? I mean, if you claim to be God, right, of the universe, you claim to be the creator, can a creator like God make mistakes in his Quran, as the Muslims claim, that it's, you know, a perfect book sent down through Jibreel to Muhammad. So that means if we can find just one mistake, guys, the conclusion is the Quran is destroyed and we can throw the Quran in the garbage bin because it's nothing better than a toilet paper, right? So let us go through so-called some scientific facts in the Quran <clears throat> and let us see if we can expose them. I hope we will have Muslims in the live chat, we see that we have already one dislike, so that means we have at least one Muslim who can call us, right? I mean, look, my Skype is open, right? My Skype is open, so that means you can call me and refute what we have to say, right? Yeah, make sure to have something to drink, guys, like me. Because I think this is going to be a long live show. If you are a Christian and you want to call us guys, maybe you want to share something, you have to wait. We will open up the line for the Christians later, okay? And if you have questions, please write them down. Because I cannot teach and answer questions in the live chat at the same time. Alright, because I have two screens. For the people who do not know, I have two screens. The screen that you see here, and we have also another screen where I can see the live chat, but I cannot teach and look at the live chat at the same time, right? So now and then I will look if there's maybe something going wrong, maybe the live stream is not correct or... Yeah, I have, I have a double screen, exactly. Every streamer nowadays has to have two screens. One to look if the live stream is going well and the other one is the teaching screen that you see where we post the sources on, your, on the screen. Thank you, Lasari, for the super chat. Thank you so much. Lasari says, and I quote, Thanks for your amazing work, RC. God bless you. Thank you so much. God bless you and your loved ones too. I appreciate it. Guys, we do not do this for ourselves. We are here only to serve the truth. And who is the truth? It's Jesus Christ. Ana huwa tariq wal haq wal hayat, right? I am the way, the truth, and life, said Jesus. So uh, we are here to serve, right? Guys, you don't need me. You don't need any Christian apologist. Because we ourselves, we need Jesus. All of you need Jesus because we are all sinners and hypocrites, right? We sin every day. We need Jesus. I myself need Jesus. So we are replaceable. But if it's the plan of the Holy Spirit to teach you, and expose liars and deceivers like Muhammad, then so be it. If we don't expose Islam, guys, 
because Muslims are a different kind of breed, if we don't break that Islamic wall that they created around themselves, the moment they are born in, in their Islamic families, they are brainwashed by the Imams. If we don't break that Islamic wall, they will never be open for the truth. So if you as a Christian wants to share the gospel, preach the gospel to Muslims, nine out of ten times it not, it's not going to work. It won't work. Why? Because we are doing this for at least 15 years, guys. We have the experience that Muslims are different kind of people. If you don't break that Islamic wall that they built around themselves, they will not be open for the truth. So we have to do this, guys. Right? We have to do this. All right. Let us start. Do we have any Muslim who might have the courage and the knowledge to call us? Any Muslim? We have three dislikes. Come on, Muslims. Don't tell me you are too afraid to call me. My Skype is open. My Skype ID is the Arab Christians. The Arab Christian. If the admins want to share it in the live chat, guys, admins, can you put my Skype ID? Thank you, Muslims. My Skype ID is the Arab Christian, as the admins already put it in the live chat. If you want to call me and refute me, maybe you want to share with us and show us just one ayah. I'm not asking for ten. One ayah that proves. That the Quran is true about this very topic. You, can you share one ayah in the Quran where it's showing that there is something called a scientific fact in it? I am glad to go through the ayah that you want to share with us. Let's go Muslims, come on. Please call us. We're not going to bite. Since we don't have calls yet, we have only dislikes. <laughs> Cowards. Let us start anyway. <clears throat> are you ready guys? Hope you are ready because I am ready brother. Chapter 67. Surat Al-Mulk, Ayah 5. Chapter 67, Ayah 5. And verily we have beautified the world's heaven with lamps. When we ask Muslims, what are those lamps? Muslims will say, that's, those are the stars. Okay, perfect. Those are the stars, brother. And we have made them missiles. So we made the stars missiles for the devils. And for them, we have prepared the doom of flame. So guys, according to this ayah, Allah grabs stars and he throws them at the jinn. Who might spy on the inhabitants of Jannah. Let's say the angels, right? But here we have a problem. Muhammad, when he was looking in the sky, guys, Muhammad, 1400 years ago, when he was looking to the sky, he was looking above, maybe once in a while he saw a falling star. <laughs> and he thought that it's an actual star. He had no idea what the difference is between a meteorite or an asteroid the difference between an asteroid or a meteor and a star. I mean, if imagine. Do you have any idea how big stars are? I mean, look at the sun. Our, our sun, right? In this solar system that we are in. If you look at the sun, do you have any idea how big the sun is? Are you telling me that Muhammad did not know the difference between a star like the sun and a meteorite? Do you know what will happen if... The sun, because it's a star, the sun, if it will be dropped inside our atmosphere, do you have any idea what will happen to us? Anthony Wilkes, why? You want to you wanna date me, brother? To be honest with you, I'm not into men, Anthony. Why do you want to see my face? Huh? Why do you want to see my face? Uh, I mean, I'm not into that kind of stuff, man. I'm a married guy. I love my wife. You know, why do you, uh, you want to, you want to, you want to date me or debate me, man? So yeah, so Muhammad, guys, in other words, Muhammad did not know the difference between a meteor, which can be in a size of a, you know, big rock, maybe. 
rock like this, he did not know the difference between a meteor, an asteroid, and a star. Alright. Muslims, you really need to start thinking here. Muhammad, I mean, I understand, 1400 years ago, these people did, did not know better. They actually thought that falling stars are actual stars. <laughs> so this proves, this ion itself already proves that the Quran cannot be from God. Because imagine if you have a star that can fall like a missile on the jinn, right? If there's any Muslim who think he has the courage and the knowledge, the knowledge to refute me, go ahead, we are live. My Skype ID is the Rob Christian. Muslims, we are not here to bite. We are here to show the truth. And only the truth can set you free. Right, guys? Any Muslim? Welcome, uh, Robert Zul. Peace of Christ be with you too. Welcome for the people who just joined. Do you have any Muslim? No Muslims. Wow. So guys, in other words, Muhammad confused meteorites or meteors and asteroids with the sun, with the stars. So life would cease to exist if a star would be dropped <laughs> on top of us if it if it will enter the moment it enters our atmosphere we will die instantly the moon will will explode the earth itself will explode the water will evaporate evaporate right the water in all the oceans and the seas will immediately in a matter of seconds do you have any idea how hot a star is guys how big a star is only the sun i mean at least a thousand and thousand and times bigger than our earth, right? Oh, our sun. And by the way, our sun, which is a star, is one of the smallest stars that we can find in the universe. There are even much bigger and bigger and bigger stars than our actual yellow sun that we can see. Right? When, it, when we have a good weather, right? So Muhammad had no idea what he was talking about in the Quran. This proves that the Quran is man-made. Right. I mean, Muslims, you dare to claim that you are followers of Deen al-Haq, which means the religion of truth. If you are followers of the religion of truth, which is Islam, why are you so ashamed to not call us and refute us? We have already four dislikes and no Muslim has the courage and the knowledge to refute me? Wow. That's bad. I mean, I think guys, to be honest with you, if Muhammad would have been alive today, still, he would have been ashamed of the Muslims of today. Right? He would be really ashamed of you Muslims. You are nothing but keyboard terrorists. You only thing you can do is text, text in the comment section, and that's it. In the live chat, that's it. Where are the Muslim heroes of today? Why are you so scared to debate us? Guys, I, I, I just had a conversation in, in my comment section under the videos with a Muslim. And this guy was spamming the, the, the comment section, left and right. But I told him, come. I mean, you you claim to know better than me. Come and debate me live on air. I'm going to go live in a couple of minutes. Where, why are these people hiding? Why are you so scared? Already seven dislikes. <laughs> and all seven of, of these Muslims do not dare to call us. What a shame. What a shame. Muhammad would have been ashamed of you Muslims. I think guys, Muhammad is now turning on the other side in his grave because he is ashamed of the Muslims of today. In the comment section, they are like roaring lions, Roar! but when it comes to debating us live on air, they become kittens. Meow. Meow. 
bad, huh? Meow. Where is Fifi? Where is Lily? Where is Mimi? When you need them, man. <sighs> what a shame. Now, as I told you, I had a discussion with a Muslim about honey. Honey in the Quran. What Allah says about bees and honey. Right? Bees and honey. We know, <clears throat> we know how honey is made, guys. If you went to school and you had a biology class, you followed a biology class, they for sure have explain to you how honey is created guys please focus okay this is very important stuff forget about muslims in the live chat who are too cowards to call us cowards so how is honey made actually guys let us go through some scientific facts and let us show you that allah cannot be god because god should not make mistakes about how honey is produced all right guys if allah claims to be god Again, if Allah claims to be God, can God make mistakes, Muslims? I mean, he claims to be God, right? And you claim that Allah is God. We have 1.6 billion Muslims who claim that there is something called Allah and he's God and the creator of the universe. So can this God, this so-called Allah, can he make mistakes and get away with it? Let us show you how we can expose this so-called Islamic God, show you that he's nothing but a liar and a deceiver. And the final conclusion is there is nothing called Allah. It's all the fabrication of Muhammad. And this is Quran. This is not hadith that you say we reject it, even if it's Sahih, brother. No, this is Quran. We are talking only about the Quran today. Guys, thank you for the live chat, Amelia. Thank you so much. Amelia in the super chat says, Muslims are obsessed with faces because Allah hides behind the veil. Yes, Allah has a hijab on his face. Allah wears burqa, maybe a female. Yeah, maybe Allah is a female brother. I mean, if Allah, you know, even according to the Quran, Allah has a hijab, right? He has a veil. Yeah, Allah wears a hijab, exactly JC, exactly. So let us prove, guys, to you that there's nothing called Allah. It's nothing but fabrication of Muhammad. All right? How is honey made according to the Quran? Now we know that honeybees, these lovely insects, they go from flower to flower, right? They hop from flower to flower. They fly from flower to flower and collect nectar, right? Nectar that they collect from flowers to make honey, to produce honey, right guys? Nectar. Now, we know when they collect nectar, <clears throat> bees, they have something called an enzyme in their body. Enzyme, the bee enzyme, right? An enzyme. If you don't know what an enzyme is, you can Google it and you will understand what it means. And on top of that, what they do is they mix the nectar, the collected nectar from the flowers. They mix it with this enzyme in their stomach, right? And they mix it and then they vomit from one bee to another. They vomit in each other's mouth. I know, you know, so a bee vomit, a bee vomit the mixture, which is nectar as I said, and the enzyme in each other mouths. I kid you not. That's what they do. That's what bees do. It's a vomit, right? So they keep mixing and vomiting in each other mouths. And finally, they drop this mixture inside the honeycombs that you see here, right? So this mixture is still not honey. Guys, this mixture is still not honey. The final process is what, what they do, the bees start to, you know, use their wings and they dehydrate from a 70% mixture between the nectar and the enzyme. 
this mixture, they dropped it from 70% to 20%, and the final product outside the body of the bee, this final product here that you see, becomes honey, right? That's how honey is produced in a nutshell. So the Quran is wrong. Honey is made outside the bee's bellies. Bees, guys, in other words, bees do not poop out or vomit out honey. Bees do not poop out or vomit honeys. Uh, Amelia says in the super chat, thank you again for the super chat, Amelia. I love you. Thank you so much for your support. She says, and I quote, according to Islam, bees poop honey. Yup, science needs to learn more. And I think all the Muslims, all the 1.6 billion Muslims, they skipped biology class when their teachers were teaching them about how honeys, sorry, how honeybees produce honey. They skipped class or maybe they fell asleep during class, right? So again, the Quran is wrong because honey is made outside the bees' bellies much later, as we explained earlier, in the beehive that you see here. Honey does not come out the bellies of bees, as Muhammad claimed in his Quranavirus. Right? So, let us go to the Quran to prove it to you guys. This is the Quran, chapter an nahl the bee, chapter 16, I 69. Now watch, guys, please pay attention, take a screenshot, let me give you the link. Let me give you the link. Chapter 16, I 69. Save it, bookmark it, guys. Help me to help you. And take notes. Let's see what it says. Chapter 16, I 69. Then eat from all kinds of fruits, Allah is saying to the bees, and thread the ways of your Lord, which are soft and easy for you. From, from their bellies, comes a drink of various colors in which is health for mankind. So guys, this drink that comes from the bellies of bees is honey and it's a drink for mankind. Do you see it? So according to the Quran, honey, <laughs> honey bees poop out honey. It's a drink for mankind. You see, it's not for animals, it's for mankind. So we can conclude that this drink is honey, right? It's honey that Allah is talking about. But wait, we already explained to you, bees do not poop out honey. We already explained it and refuted what the Quran is saying, right? So here we found another mistake. Yes, it says then, it says that in the Arabic, guys, Yakhruju, Yakhruju, which means comes out, right? Yakhruj, Yakhruj. Uh, sorry if I'm, you know, but you will have Yakhruj. I'm not sure how I'm going to translate it, but you know, you'll have Yakhruju, Yakhruj, Yakhruju comes out, min from. Butuniha, from their bellies. Sharab. Sharabon, right? Sharab means drink. So, in other words, from their bellies, out of their bellies, butuniha, which means bellies, butuniha, bellies, comes a drink, which is false. Again, a huge mistake. Yakhruj comes out from their bellies, a drink. That's a lie. Since when bees poop out honey? It's a drink for mankind, right? Linas, that means for, the, for, for people, right? For mankind, for people. Linas, Linas. Comes out from their bellies, exactly we are blessed. So it comes out of their bellies. So according to Allah, if you Let's say you find a dead bee. Let's say you find a dead bee on the ground. If you, you know, and maybe it's disgusting for, for, for people. But if you cut in the, inside the belly, according to Allah, you'll find in the belly of the bee, in the stomach of the bee, honey. Have you ever seen 
I mean, if you see a dead bee on the ground, open it belly and, and I will give you a thousand dollar if you can see honey inside the belly of the bee. Wow! What a lie! What a lie! Allah, Allah, you claim to be God. According to 1.6 billion Muslims, you are God and they worship you at least five times a day in their daily prayers, right? They worship you five times a day. They do Ramadan like this month, right? They call it the holy month of Ramadan. They worship you. They ask forgiveness for you, but you can make such mistakes and you still call yourself God? Try not to laugh, guys, about these disgusting lies of Muhammad in his Quran, in his man-made. This is Quran. This is not Da'if Hadith, brother. This is not Sahih Bukhari. This is not Sahih Muslim. Right? This is not Sunnah Ibn Majah that you can say, oh, it's weak Hadith. Even if it's Sahih Hadith. No, this is Quran. Is this Ayah? Guys, is this Ayah? Muslims. Is this Ayah Da'if? Is this ayah da'if? Brother, is this a da'if ayah inside the Quran? Chapter 16, ayah 69. Sahih, Sahih, da'if, da'if. Speaking from Kaif, Hira, 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 Hira. No, this is the Quran of Allah who claims to be God. But can God make such mistakes? Claiming that bees poop out honey? And it's a drink for mankind. So that means the Quran must be dying. Now some people will say, uh, no, no, this drink is not honey. You liars. Because it's talking about a drink for mankind. A drink for mankind. Linas, right? A drink for mankind. The word Linas means for people, for mankind. If we go to the tafsir of Ibn Kathir for the same chapter, uh, chapter 16, ayah 68-69, Ibn Kathir makes it crystal clear. This sharab, sharab, this drink that you see here in yellow, there comes forth from their bellies a drink of varying colors. Yes, honey can have many different colors. You, you have darker colors, you have lighter colors. Colors for honey depends on what kind of honey bees you have, right? So the honey can be more darker than other type of honey. That's true. That last part, but where it is healing for man, meaning honey. Do you see it? So this drink that is inside the bellies of bees is honey. This is Ibn Kathir. This is not Arab Christian. Ibn Kathir is a, one of the best scholars to go to to explain an ayah of the Quran. So this is a commentary by the Ibn Kathir. He's not a, you know, he's not a joke in Islam, guys. Ibn Kathir. So we can conclude, even to the scholars of Islam, and you can also go to Tafsir Jalalain that agrees with Ibn Kathir, this drink is honey. So in other words, again, according to the Quran of Allah, bees poop out honey. Wow! Muslims, why do you believe in the lies of Muhammad? Why are you not leaving this disgusting man-made cult? Because we just proved to you again that the Quran cannot be from God. Because if Allah claims to be God, can he make mistakes like these? The Messiah, the Messiah, you're an idiot. You are certified donkey, right? Because the ayah is clear. It says honey comes from the bellies of bees. It's a lie. There is no single drop of honey in any bee's stomach. Stop being an idiot, man. Stop being an idiot. Now, guys, let me let me play a small video clip for you. Let me play a small video clip for you to show you that we are not lying and modern science proves 
that bees do not poop out honey like the Qur'an's claim, right? Like the Qur'an claims. Let me play the video clip for you. Let's see. Put on your headsets, guys. It's a very small, short video clip. So you'll see that we are not lying. And this actually refutes the Qur'an in chapter 16, ayah 69. Let us play this video clip. Now, the one million dollar question is, is honey made in the bellies of bees? Is the Quran correct that honey poop out, sorry, bees poop out honey? Is this true? That's the one million dollar question. Let us see. Because the one million dollar question is, is honey made in the belly of bees or does honey come forth from the bellies of bees. Let us investigate that. How do huh? bees make honey? No idea. To make honey, the worker honeybee sucks nectar oh. from flowers and stores it in its honey stomach. Once the worker bee returns to the hive, it vomits the nectar into a processor honeybee's mouth. Ew. In the processor bee's mouth and oh. stomach, an enzyme called invertase is added to the nectar. Invertase breaks some nectar into simple sugars like glucose and fructose. Huh? Then it vomits the partially converted nectar into another processor bee's mouth, who also adds more invertase, helping break down more nectar. This process goes on until most of the nectar is converted into simple sugars. Then, the mixture of simple sugars is stored in the honeycomb. Oh. At this point, the mixture is still watery. Hence, the bees flap their wings, which evaporates water and thickens the mixture to a So guys, do you see how the, now the bees are using their wings? Because this mixture is still not honey yet. So they have to dehydrate the honey with using their wings. It takes a lot of time and process, right? So from 70% to 20% dehydration, then the final product becomes honey outside the belly of bees, right? So the Quran is wrong. Do you see it? Let me go a little bit back. We convert a nectar into another processor bee's mouth, who also adds more invertase, helping break down more nectar. This process goes on until most of the nectar is converted into simple sugars. Then, the mixture of simple sugars is stored in the honeycomb. Oh. At this point, the mixture is still watery. Hence, the bees flap their wings, which evaporates water and thickens the mixture to eventually form honey. Hmm. Do you see it, guys? <laughs> Lord, Muslims, Muslims, you have a problem. Modern science has a problem with your Quran. Facts have a huge problem with your Quran. No, it's from your side. It's not my uh, from my side. If you have problems, I think it's your side. You have to fix your connection or refresh, guys. All right. So, guys, can we now conclude that the Quran of Allah is wrong? We already said if we can find one mistake in the Quran that destroys Islam, Islam collapses. One mistake in the Quran, it's over for Islam. Right? Do we have any Muslim who has the courage and the knowledge to call us and refute us? Is there any Muslim who wants to refute modern science? You are a hypocrite. No, you are a hypocrite. You are a son of a munafiq. You, you are ashamed. You are ashamed for something called brains. Your brains do not function, Ya Abdul. Your brains are dead. You Muslims are all dead zombies walking around. Your brains are dead. The moment you come out of the belly of your mother, out of the womb of your mother, you have already dysfunctioning brains. You cannot think for yourselves, Muslims. You listen only to the lies of Imams and Shiuk. We already proved to you that the Quran of Allah is false. Right? Thank you, Amelia. Amelia in the super chat says, if Muslims believe a prophet of God to have sex with a child is okay, of course they believe bees pooping out honey. Exactly, Amelia. <laughs> 
That's a good one. Thank you for your super chat again, sister. God bless you. God bless your loved ones. Any Muslim who has the courage and the knowledge to call us life? Guys, was that small video clip informative? Was it good? Should we use it more often for future uh, live shows? Such kind of video clips? I hope it was crystal clear. And it showed how actually bees produce honey, how they make honey. Collecting nectar, right? Mixing it with the enzyme in their body, in their stomach. Vomiting this mixture between a bee and another bee. Vomiting in each other's mouth. I know it might be disgusting for some people. But that's how bees make honey. And then finally they drop this mixture inside the honeycombs, right? Here, inside the honeycombs, they flap their wings and drop it from 70% dehydration to 20%. So they, the water comes out and only 20% is water, right? Then this final product, after a lot of processing, a lot of work by the worker bees, it becomes honey, right? So Muslims, science, facts are actually the biggest enemy of your Quran. The Quran is busted! Speaking from Kif, Hira, Hira, Hira. <laughs> the Messiah, the Messiah, you're an idiot. Look what the Messiah is saying, guys. You, Rob Christian, you got caught. Why would you assume that anything that comes out of the uh, belly is poop? You are an idiot. Because your Quran claims that what comes out of the bellies of bees is honey. So according to the Quran, bees poop out honey, you idiot. It's not me saying that. That's your Quran, you idiot. You idiot. And I'm not trying to insult any real stupid person or any donkey. When we call you donkeys and idiots, we're not actually trying to insult any donkey or any idiot. Your brains are not functioning. The moment you become a Muslim, you, your brains stop functioning. You become a zombie. You're all zombies, man. Idiot. Any Muslim. You must be a true donkey, a certified donkey to believe that bees poop out honey. Right? Any Muslim, any Muslim who has the courage and the knowledge to refute us live on air, my Skype is open. You can call me on Skype. My Skype ID is the Rob Christian. Yes, uh, Andrew, Andrew K. Andrew K is saying, Rob Christian, are you guiding Allah to the straight path? Yes. I'm the one who is more powerful than Allah. I am guiding him to the straight path. Watch. Allah is asking to be guided, right? Allah is asking himself to be guided. Please, Allah is saying, please guide us on the straight path. Because it's Allah talking, right, Muslims? Allah is always talking in the Quran. So Allah is saying, please guide us on the straight path. Ahdina sirat al mustaqim Please, Allah is saying, Allah is saying, Allah is praying to someone. I'm not sure to who Allah is praying. But Allah asking for guidance. In this case, it's me because I'm guiding Allah that he's wrong about how bees produce honey. <clears throat> so it seems that Rob Christian is more powerful than Allah himself, man. Allah needs to pray and he is asking for the, to be guided by Rob Christian today. So I'm the teacher of Allah today, guys. Gamer is saying, oh, other misunderstanding. Oh my God, Rob. No, you, you, you need to say, oh my Allah. Don't say, oh my God, say, oh my Allah. What's the matter with you? Show me that I'm, I'm lying. Show me. Call me and show me where I'm lying. I challenge you to call me live on air and refute me, spank me in front of all these people who are watching. We have almost 200 people watching, man. Show everybody that Rob Christian is lying. Come on. I challenge you. 
oh my Allah. Allah is saying, oh my Allah, please guide me on the straight path. But, but make sure if you want to call me, say inshallah three times, do evolution seven times, and then call me because else Allah is not going to help you, brother. Uh, Anthony White Wilkes saying, Rob Christian, what's your opinion about the lefties and Marxists that always defend Islam? Those are stupid people, man. When you are allowing these Muslims to enter and infiltrate your Western countries, you are actually allowing them to come here, spill their poison and their lies and their man-made Quran and deceive others like them. You are allowing them to infiltrate your country. So the lefties are actually their own enemies, right? I mean, you cannot tell me that these Muslims, 1.6 billion Muslims are smart. If you believe that bees poop out honey, there's something wrong with you, man, in 2020. You must be brain dead, you must be a zombie if you believe that bees poop out honey. Honey comes from the bellies of bees, brother? Guys, conclusion, the Quran claims that honey comes forth, comes out of the bellies of bee. Yakhruj, sharab, right? Yakhruj comes out of their bellies. Butuniha, from their butuniha, their bellies, a drink, sharaban, right? Sharab. But that's false. Uh, correct is that nectar plus the enzyme, the nectar that bees collect, they mix it with an enzyme inside the stomach of the female worker bees. Later they drop it after mixing, vomiting, mixing. They drop it in the honeycombs. And the final product, much later, after a lot of processing, it becomes honey. So the conclusion is the Quran of Allah is false. Muslims, you need to wake up and leave this disgusting man made cold man. We already proved to you that the Quran of Allah contains tons and tons of scientific mistakes. Thank you, Jacob Matthew, for the super chat. God bless you. Thanks for the donation. But guys, I have a surprise. Surprise, surprise, Rob Christian. I have another surprise for you. Because we know where Muhammad stole this idea from. In chapter 16, Ayah 69, he stole it from a Greek scientist, guys, by the name of Hippocrates. Hippocrates, a Greek scientist who lives 2,500 years ago. This man, this scientist, this Greek scientist, a thousand years before Islam, this man actually made that claim that bees make honey in their bellies. That was his claim. And we know, guys... If you watched our other live shows, we already explained that Waraka ibn Nawfal, right? Waraka ibn Nawfal, the cousin of Khadija, was always translating books for Muhammad. Others like Zayd ibn Thabit did too. So they were translating scientific books, books from Hippocrates and others. This Hippocrates claimed that bees make honey, but he was wrong. I mean, it's an old scientist, right? who lived 2,500 years ago. People can make mistakes, even scientists, right? But the problem is Muhammad stole his work, he plagiarized the work of Hippocrates, and he called it the Quran. Bam! Surprise, surprise! You see how Muhammad was nothing but a copy-paste machine? Guys, do you see how Muhammad was nothing but a copy-paste machine? Surprise, surprise! Surprise, surprise! <laughs> Any Abdul? Any Muslim? I mean, if you don't believe me, guys, Google is your friend. Ask Prophet Google, peace be upon him. <laughs> you know, look and look up what this guy actually believed. He was 
the scientist of his time, and we know that Greek scientists were famous, right? And their books used to circle around the Mediterranean Sea, right, guys? The Mediterranean Sea that <laughs> in that time, you know, that was the golden age for these scientists, you know, to write books, share their discoveries. But these scientists, yes, they were awesome for their time, right? But also they could make mistakes. This guy actually does did believe that bees, you know, you could, you could find honey in the bees' bellies, which is false. There's not no single drop of honey inside a bee's belly, right? So he was wrong and Muhammad stole his work, right? Muhammad, guys, you need to understand what's going on. Khadija made Muhammad a prophet, right? She was the number one woman in Mecca. She wished that her husband would become a prophet. What did she do? Her cousin Waraka, right? Her cousin Waraka ibn Nawfal, he could translate from books. Muhammad used to work for Khadija. He was a merchant. Merchant working for the richest woman of Mecca, which is Khadija, his first wife. Right, guys? Are you, are you listening, guys? Give me one. So Muhammad had access as a merchant, had access to many books, including the books of Hippocrates. Right? So what did Muhammad do? He brought these books to Waraq ibn Nufl. And Waraq ibn Nufl was translating books for him. So when you Muslims say that the plagiarized work of Hippocrates is Quran, that means Hippocrates is the real God of Islam. Because Muhammad stole his work. So it seems that a pagan Greek scientist in the shape of Hippocrates is actually the real God of Islam. If you claim that Bees poop out honey, brother. No, it's you, uh, Pierce Taylor. You need to refresh. It's on, from your side. Here it's good. You need to refresh. If you have problems. Any Muslim? Do we have any Muslim guys? Who dares to call us life? Yeah, we have more than 200 people watching, guys. And are you saying that not one single Muslim, not one single Muslim has the courage to debate Rob Kishan live on air and to spank him for everybody to see? Guys, I took a vow 15 years ago. I took eight years ago when I started doing this. I said, and I promised myself, if there's a single Muslim who can refute me in front of everybody, I will stop doing what I do. I will delete my YouTube page, guys. I promise you that. I will delete my YouTube page and stop teaching if any Muslim can refute me. It's fair challenge, right, guys? And I mean this challenge. This vow that I took was 15 years ago. And I'm still waiting for a Muslim to refute me, to accept this very challenge. 15 years ago, brother. Yeah, Hippocrates, someone saying, Peter M saying, Hippocrates is Allah. Exactly. Because Muhammad stole the work of Hippocrates. Any Abdul? Muad Sharif. Let me explain to you. Maybe you just joined. According to your Quran, according to your Quran, in chapter 16, ayah 69, according to your Quran, chapter 16, ayah 69, honey comes from the bellies of bees. Do you agree with that, brother? If yes, I challenge you to call me live and show us that this is true. Do you agree with the Quran saying that bees have honey stored inside their bellies, which is a drink for mankind? Do you agree with this? If yes, call me, 
My Skype ID is the Rob Christian. Again, the Rob Christian. Call me and let us see if this is true. Any Muslim? <clears throat> Guys, it seems that we don't have any Muslim who has the courage and the knowledge to call us. If you are a Christian, guys, now the line is open for Christians. If you are a Christian and you want to call us, the line, is, the line is open. You can ask us questions. You can call whatever you want to do. Don't say, Rob Christian, you are only allowing Muslims to call you live. No. You want to call us? The line is open. My Skype ID is the Rob Christian. And you can share your thought or maybe your question uh, live on air with us. Maybe you want to add something to what is being said today. You can call us live on air. Anyone? Maybe people uh, have questions in the live chat. If you have a question, drop your question. And if I see it... Yeah, Bruno, call me if you like, Bruno. You don't need to send me a message, uh, you know, call me if you like. Hello, Brother Rob. Hey, Brother Bruno, how are you, my Good. friend? I'm fine, brother. I'm fine. God bless you and God bless the audience in the chat. Thank you. I appreciate have, it. God bless you too, my friend. Welcome. You're live on air. What do you want to share with us? Uh, yeah, I have actually one question and this uh, with the bees and all is perfect that I can use. I send. I would send you after I call you a photo. Yeah. There is uh, near me where I live a, a, pro, a pro kickboxer an Austrian kickboxer who converted last week to to Islam oh, and that's I sad. don't know <laughs> yeah really, really sad brother really sad yeah, maybe and, maybe if you can tell him that uh, Allah is mistaken I mean Muhammad is mistaken about that bees do actually not poop honey <laughs> maybe he can uh, leave this cool the, the crazy thing is uh, on his Facebook post uh, he mentioned it uh, I have approved because of the scientific miracles in Austria. He said this, yeah. and I will I will text him. I will send him a message and yeah. this with the bees. And do you have for me anything I, I could I could say to him? Yeah, uh, like we said, I mean, other we discussed another ayah, chapter sixty-seven, ayah five. According to this ayah, Allah takes stars. Right? When we ask Muslims, what are these lamps? They say these are the stars. So tell him, do you believe that Allah takes, like, let's say the sun and he drops it on us, right? Because jinn, they live on earth. We already proved that last time. So yeah, if yeah. he throws stars. I mean, you know, you know, you have any idea what will happen to you or to all of us here if the sun or a star drops on earth? We will die. The seas, the water will be evaporated. We will die in, in a matter of seconds, man. Yeah, yeah. This so is Muhammad, right. in other word, in other, in other word, in a nutshell, Muhammad had no idea what the difference is between a meteor or a, an asteroid and a star. Muhammad thought when he was looking in the sky 1400 years ago, he thought that falling objects like meteorites could be a size of you know a stone, right? He thought that these yeah. were stars. He thought that the meteors were stars when he thought that these are falling stars. No, there, there's nothing called a falling star because stars do not fall. They stay fixed on their position like the sun, right? Oh, yes, they, they might, you know, they might turn around themselves, but they certainly do not fall. Uh, brother Rob, this was, this was my question. A last thing I want to say, would it be okay for you if I can talk to him and maybe that he can call you on Skype. Sure, he can, that would be he, amazing. Let him call. He can he speak yeah. English and this, but uh, the problem is I think he done this uh, because of community, because of the people and all the stuff. But yeah. 
it's really sad. He's learning now the prayers in Arabic. No, that's, he ma that's stupid, he making man. videos, no. and I'm afraid maybe they will send him to to fight zone to yeah. fight him for his yeah. for ISIS. Guys, so I will... yeah, Bruno, do you see that any person who converts to Islam, this person has no idea what Islam teaches. They convert without any any idea what Islam teaches. They have no idea what the Quran says, and they become Muslims. Why would you become a Muslim if you don't? study the Quran first you yeah know? it's because of the community they, yeah they deceive them those poor victims they deceive them and they become you know victims like these people who deceive them the Muslims themselves are victims of this man-made cult these scientific disasters in the Quran that they listen to they, so in other words Muslims they don't study they don't read their own Quran they only listen to Imams, to, to their lying shiuch, lying Imams, Imam. lying teachers, and that is actually the proof that Muslims do yes. not study. But nothing changed, brother, because you and uh, CP and David, these videos, all of these videos, and still, they mm -hmm. wouldn't believe me. They would take that as an attack. Or something like I don't know, but yeah, would... maybe you can share the video with him. You can give him the link, and he can watch it. And then yeah, if he if he thinks if he thinks I'm I'm uh, lying, let him call me. No problem. Yeah, this this is why I want to call and uh, to talk about him so that he can see that we are talking about him. And mm. I will send to you that he can call you on Skype sure. one day. Sure. Okay, brother Rob. Thank you. Thank you for the call and God bless you. God bless you too, but thank you for calling my Ciao, brother. God bless you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. Do you have any other callers? Do we have maybe questions in the live chat? Do we have any Muslim who wants to call? My Skype ID is the Rob Christian. The Rob Christian. Imam Murra? Imam Murra wants to call me? Call me. What's holding you back, man? What's holding you back? Call me. Brother? Hey, brother, sister. If you want to call me, brother? We are live on air, brother. My Skype ID is the Rob Christian, brother. You can call me, brother. Speaking from Kiev, Hira, Hira, Hira. Is there any Sheikh? Sheikh, Sheikh. Hey, brother, sister. Any Abdul? Can you still hear us? I just had a hiccup. My stream was dropped for one second and we are back again give me one if you can still hear me guys please give me one if you can still hear me refresh i know guys you know it's life everything can happen sorry for that but it's out of our control it's out of our hands right if the stream buffers or whatever but now it's okay i think right it's okay now Okay, good, good, good. Thank you guys for the confirmation. Any Muslim? Uh, Ducasio, Ducasio. He, Ducasio saying, Rob, why don't you use Discord and make a server? It's a lot easier for debating. Ducasio, do you have any idea? Do you have any idea? Do you have any idea who Rob Christian is? My friend, I am, I'm invited to many Discord servers. No single Muslim dares to call me also there. Not here, not anywhere. They don't dare to call us, man. They don't dare to debate us. Do you think it matters if I'm on Discord? or they, I, I, I am on Discord, right? These people don't dare to call me. Imam Murra, who are you? You have to call me. I don't have to call you. You call me. Send me a message, right? I still did not give any message from you. Who are you, man? You can call me. My Skype is open, man. Eh? Idiot. It's uh, Ultimate Donkey. If you are Ultimate Donkey, don't call me. I have no time for Ultimate Donkey. Certified Donkey is like you. Yeah, I think it's him. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think so. Yeah, Snow Leopard. I think it's him. Yeah. And I don't want to waste my time with uh, a non Muslim, to be honest with you. He's not a Muslim. He is a Rashad Khalifa heretic Abdul. Oh, okay. I see, Bruno. I see. Yeah. Uh, he looks like a very smart guy. 
<laughs> to be honest with you. This fighter, he looks like a very smart guy. If just if you look at his picture only. Yeah, this guy truly is not using his brains, clearly. I think maybe he's using his brains to, uh, you know, for getting slaps on it. He's not using it to, you know. Yeah, he looks, he, he exactly, he looks like an MMA fighter. Pictures, yeah, I see. Yeah, you, 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 to be honest with you, you must be a crazy guy to join this crazy cult. Any, any person who wants to call, guys? Any Christian? Any Muslim? Line is open. Post it, everybody can see. This is the guy. I mean, look, he looks really smart, man. You can see that he's very educated, brother. Right? Very smart, Abdul. Very smart. Tattoos and whatnot. Yeah, he looks like a very genius dude, my friend. Anyone? Any Muslim? Any Christian? Do we have questions in the live chat that we can answer, guys? Let's see if we can pick up a, a question from the live chat. Uh, let me go through. I don't see any questions yet. Maybe I missed it in the beginning. Allah praise says, I have a question. Where in the Quran does Allah say, I am God, worship me? Uh, I don't think there is an ayah that says exactly in those words, I am God, worship me. There is no ayah like this in the Quran. We know if we go to the Quran, my friend, let's go to the Quran. Uh, let's see. Okay. If we go to chapter 112, Muslims, they often go to this chapter, guys. Let me make it bigger. When we ask them, show us where Allah says that He is one. Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Qul huwa Allahu ahad. My friend, if Allah was truly God, He would not have made such a huge mistake. Mistake. What? Are you saying that this ayah contains a mistake? Yes. Chapter 112, Surah Al Ikhlas, ayah 1. Qul say. Qul means say, Allah is saying say, Allah, He, He Allah is one of, one of, say, He Allah is one of, that's it, brother, Allah is one of what, is Allah one of the donkeys, uh, is Allah uh, a bee, Allah is one of the bees. Allah is one of the donkeys. Allah, what are you say, trying to say here? Why are you not finishing the sentence? Say, you, Allah, he, Allah, is one of. One of what? I know Arabic, brother. Call me ca gamer. You can't even spell gamer. You spell, say for M-A-R. Samer? What's Samer, man? You can't even spell correctly, man. Anyway, mistake. No, 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 he's one, not off. You idiot. I challenge you to call me and refute me on this ayah. Go ahead. Brother, you don't know Arabic, brother. Call me. Let's see. Sh show everybody that Rob Kishan is lying. Prove to everybody that does not say, say he is, Allah is, one off. What do you mean, Allah? Are you one of many gods? Is that what you're trying to say? Yes. Allah is trying to tell you that Allah is one of many gods. Yes, that's true. Because we know that Allah has three daughters. When Muhammad delivered the satanic verses to the pagan Quraysh of Mecca, he said, 
inna shafa'atahunna laturtaja. Meaning, these exalted idols, these exalted cranes, these high cranes, who are they? Allat al uzza wal manat. Because you know, the pagans of Mecca, they used to worship to Allah as their supreme idol. Guys, listen carefully. The pagan of Quraysh, they used to pray to Allah because he's the supreme moon idol of the Quraysh, which are the family of Muhammad, the tribe of Muhammad. Did you catch it? So when they used to pray to Allah, who is the moon god, they actually believed that Allah had three daughters, right? Allat al-Uzza wal Manat. They could fly, right? Because they are cranes. You know what cranes are, guys? Have you any idea what cranes are? Let me show you. For the people who do not know what cranes are. All right. Uh, let's see. These are bird cranes, guys. These are the birds that we are talking about. Exalted cranes, high cranes. So these birds that you see here, they have very long legs. Do you see it? They used to carry like a mail delivery system. They used to carry the prayers, right? The prayers of the Quraysh of Mecca, the pagans of Mecca. They used to fly those prayers, you know, they delivered the prayers to Allah, to the supreme moon idol. So they were actually the in-between guys, the intercessors. They used to deliver the meal, which is the prayer, to Allah. Right? Do you have no an idea what the Quraysh of Mecca, how, how they actually... What they actually believed, guys? Do you have now a small idea? For the people maybe who, who never heard of this story before. So these were the daughters of Allah. They looked like this. They believed, the pagans believed that they looked like this. And they could fly. These are the exalted cranes. Their intercession is hoped for. So they interceded for the Quraysh of Mecca. To Allah. So they delivered these cranes, delivered the prayers to Allah by using their wings, fly all the way to Allah. You see it? And not only that. When Muhammad gave the satanic verses about the exalted cranes, Allah al Uzza wal Manat, he bowed down, he did sujood, which is prostration, it's an act of worship, bird idols. Muhammad said, These exalted cranes, their intercession is hopeful. And the Meccans were happy with Muhammad. Right? They were happy with Muhammad for saying beautiful stuff about their idols. Later, later that evening, Jibreel comes and he starts to spank Muhammad. Spank, spank Muhammad. What have you done? Jibreel said to Muhammad, what have you done? I did not give you these verses. These are verses from Satan. Uh oh. So Jibreel spanking Muhammad. Right? What have you done? And he corrects, he takes it out from the Quran. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Where is Allah when you need him to protect Muhammad from Satan? Right? Where is Allah when you need him to protect Muhammad from Satan? Yeah, Muhammad became a mushrik. Exactly, carry on. Muhammad became a mushrik. Right? When he delivered the satanic verses and prostrated to Allah, Al-Uzza, wal manat A Marvel MCU, brother, your Arabic has... Hey, brother, brother, why don't you call me and refute me, man?
تروح فين يا سعلوك بين الملوك تروح فين يا اخي where are you where, where do you want to go everywhere your Muhammad went to go we, we bust him and we show everybody that he's nothing but a liar وين بدك تروح يا اخي وين بدك تروح we are here to bust Muhammad and his lies we are here to spank Islam and you Muslims cannot do anything about it except cry cry babies man cry babies I challenge you to call me live on air my Skype ID is the Rob Christian and refute me do you have any callers do you have any Christian callers or Muslim callers the line is open guys come on no I'm not an Egyptian do you have any Muslim? Yalla ya akhwan. We always correct you in your wildest dreams, brother. You are nothing but a coward sitting in the live chat. Muhammad himself would be ashamed of you that you cannot even protect and defend Deen al haq brother. The religion of truth. I mean, if you're such a proud Muslim and you believe that you're a follower of Deen al-Haq, the religion of truth, which is Islam, why are you so scared to call us? Are you scared to be busted like your prophet? We are here, bro. Make sure to say inshallah three times. Say inshallah three times. Do some wudu, do evolution, then call me. Because Allah will not help you in the debate, brother. Make sure to say inshallah. Yeah, a lot of Muhammadans in the live chat, in the comment section. The moment we close the live stream, guys, they all become lions. Roar. But in the live chat, are meow, meow, brother. Inshallah, meow, brother. Speaking from Kif Hira, meow, meow, meow. Imagine, guys, we Christians are not afraid. Right? Because we follow the truth. Who is the truth? Jesus Christ himself. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and life. So because we are followers of Jesus, he is the truth. We are not afraid. We are here. Day in, day out, man. But you see the Muslims? <laughs> Thank God I'm not you Muslims. Thank God. Any Muslim? Brother, why did Muhammad deliver the satanic verses, brother? Rob Christian, you are lying. No, I'm not lying. Chapter 22. Let me show you guys for the people who maybe who do not know. Chapter 22, Surah Al-Hajj, Ayah 52. Let me go there. Let me show you how Muhammad fell for the trap of Satan himself. And all the noble messengers or prophets whom we sent before you, it occurred with all of them. So here Muhammad is lying about all the prophets, guys. Do you see? All of them, all the prophets, that whenever they recited the message of Allah. <laughs> so Muhammad is lying about all the prophets, including Moses, Abraham, all of them. Lying. Satan included a bit from his own speech on their tongue. Do you see it, guys? in their recitation to the people so any prophet according to this ayah guys look how muhammad is busting all the prophets because you know muhammad because no muhammad knew he fell for the trap of satan he delivered the satanic verses to form an excuse to make an excuse you know what he said he lied about all the prophets and he said any prophet who delivered the message of god Satan came in between and he included a bit of his satanic verses from his own satanic speech in their recitation to the people. Did you catch it? So to do damage control, Muhammad said all the prophets suffered from the satanic verses. You liar. Shame on you. You see how the prophet of Islam is lying about the true prophets? Do you see how Islam is nothing but an insult to the true prophets? Muhammad created Islam to insult all the prophets.
lying about the prophets. Shame on you, Muhammad. Shame on you for lying. But we know Muhammad had no shame, he had no honor, and he had no dignity. Muhammad created Islam for his penis. Yes, you heard it correctly. Muhammad created Islam for his penis. To have as much sex as he could for his own sexual desires with women. Women in the eyes of Muhammad were nothing but sexual objects. Right? Sexual objects, brother. Yes. In Islam, women are nothing but sex objects. Right? <laughs> Look at this translation, guys. Idiot. Muhammad created Islam for the kawai batraba, brother. Your Arabic sucks, brother. What kawai batraba? What is that? And maidens with swelling breasts, brother, like of age. Swelling breasts? Yes, brother. Look at these mel melons, man. Look, look. Weapons of mass destruction, brother. Swelling breasts, brother. Pow, pow, pow. I mean, if you like swelling breasts, brother, you we should take your shahada, man. Take the shahada and you will get melon-sized boobs, brother, in Jannah, brother. Swelling breast, brother? Yes, brother. Kapel! Who, want, who doesn't want that, man? I mean, I mean, if you are after sex and big breasts, you should definitely become a Muslim. Swelling breasts, brother. Kawaii batraba. Brother, you don't know Arabic, brother. Playboy mention in Allah's Jannah, exactly. Boing, 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 boing. Imagine, bro, is if these weapons of de mass destruction fall on your head, brother. Man. Any Muslim? Any Christian? Who wants to call, guys? Anyone? I mean, if you are after these things, you should definitely become a Muslim. Allah will give you 72 huris, you know, and Allah is even describing what's inside the female parts, right? Yatmethuhunna, right? Which means... Their hymens, their hymens are not deflowered by any man or jinn, brother. So you will get 72 virgins and their hymen are not broken, brother. Allah needs to describe what's inside the fijayjay of the women, brother. Inside the fijayjay, yes, brother. Yatmithuhunna, brother. Uh, David Rai, why are you not calling me, bro? I missed you, man. Anyone, any one of the admins wants to call? Any Muslim? Any Christian? A Marvel MCU. So, you're calling me stupid, but you believe that you're going to get swelling breasts in the... Red light districts of Allah. Hello? Hi. Yeah, hello. Can you hear me? Yes, you're live on air. Welcome. Welcome. So, my question to the Muslims is according to the Quran, the satanic revelations were given to other prophets. Can yes. they name one? Yeah, can they name one? Exactly. Which one? Which of the prophets suffered? from the satanic verses like Muhammad, because it says, and all the noble messengers and, and prophets whom we sent before you, it occurred with all of them that whenever they recited their book, let's say the Torah, the Injil, the Quran, all of them, Satan included a bit of his satanic speech in it, in their recitation to the people. Can you describe any 
prophet, any messenger who suffered from the satanic verses like Muhammad? Any, any Not age? that I'm aware of. Mm. I mean, no one is willing to claim to and claim prophethood because you run into the problem of, okay, well, if it's satanic, what point does it begin? What point does it end? Yeah, my, my friend, the thing is, the final conclusion is, Muhammad, because he know he is spanked, he, know, he knows he's busted, to do damage control, he had to lie about all the prophets. And this proves that Muhammad is nothing but a liar, a deceiver, and a fake prophet who was not protected by Allah, and he delivered the satanic verses to, uh, to the people of Quraysh, to the pagans of Quraysh, and he gave them the satanic verses. He said to them, these are the exalted cranes and their intercession is up for and all the pagans prostrated and Muhammad prostrated and all the Muslims including Omar, Ali, Abu Bakr, all of them they became mushrikeen they all became mushrikeen did you guys well, did you? Uh, idolaters, yes. Yeah, they became all idolaters. They all became pagans. They started to prostrate in front of the daughters of Allah. To Allah, Al-Uzza, wal manat Sujood. Prostration. Which is an act of worship. Yep. Yes. I mean, if you want to talk about, you know, idolatry, why does Muhammad have the name Muhammad? Yeah. Why, well, yeah why, why, is, why is he called Muhammad? We know that Muhammad's real name is not Muhammad. It's Qatham. So when he took Muhammad as title, because we know that Muhammad is a title, it means the praised one. The praised one. What does that mean? The praised one. If we go to the Quran, chapter 1. Guys, watch. Chapter 1, ayah 2. All praise... Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. All praises to Allah. So, but we know Muhammad's name is the praised one. So here when Muhammad took that name, he made himself, Muhammad made himself equal with Allah. Bam! Disaster. Muhammad wa loved to be worshipped by his followers. Because if you are a cult leader, of course, in the end, you want to be worshipped. That's what all cult leaders is, are after. They are after sex with me, as much as women. They want to be worshipped and praised. And now we can conclude that Muhammad is nothing but a fake prophet. And he made himself equal to his own God. Exactly. For, uh, for example, um, uh, actually a multiple part example. So when you look, uh, there's been studies that have done that says people have power over others. It's more addictive than cocaine. Yeah. Um, you, that's why the in politics you tend to have people that are extremely uh, show psychopathic tendencies, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's very normal, unfortunately. Yeah. Now down that uh, same vein, um, one of the problems that you have with that is. Uh, for instance, if you go like the prophet Isaiah, that man basically lived destitute. Or you know, um, John the Baptist, he, he was a wild man, wore animal skins, and, eat, and ate locusts and wild honey. Mm -hmm. Those are two examples that are just 180 degrees. One of them, you know, Muhammad had women, and all the money in the, that existed in the world back mm -hmm. then. You know, mm -hmm. how, how, how do you bribe somebody with 100 camels? This yeah. this. I mean, that, that, that's Bill Gates kind of money. Yeah, this is, you know, back uh, then. mafia leader. That's what mafia leaders do, right? They buy an army. Yes. Uh, they, you know, in the beginning, they will try. And Muhammad, when he had, he was without an army. When he went to the Meccans, he went to the Jews, he went to the Christians. All of them rejected him. Even the family of Muhammad. Muhammad had two uncles. Both of his uncles rejected him. I mean, if even your own family re reject you because they know. They know he's a false prophet. I mean, if your family rejects you, is there nothing fishy going on here, guys? If the Jews and the Christians rejected him, they know well, Muhammad is, is nothing but a cult leader. He's nothing but a thief robbing caravans, you know? And when Muhammad would, became argue, stronger, you know, he didn't need to make so, any peace with anyone anymore. Right? 
Correct. Um, however, there's one one side little part there, and that is the part where a prophet is never received by his own people. Mm. Um, that's from the New Testament. Yes. Um, I think it's also from the Old Testament as well. <laughs> but the the problem with that is if you can't show a reason for it, for example, um, the perfect test or something else, then um, that's a reason. Hey, you delivered satanic verses. Bam, mm. you're not a prophet. Mm. Hey, your message conflicts with others. Bam, you're not a prophet. Yeah. You don't know the name of God. Bam, you're not a prophet. I mean, this is that is mm. um, evidence based. If that makes any kind of sense, it's, you're, yeah. it, you can't say someone is not a prophet because you don't like them. That's not how it works. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you, you actually remind me of a very important uh, chapter of the Bible. Now, when we ask Muslims, uh, can you show us one uh, chapter uh, in the Holy Bible where Muhammad is mentioned? Because if we go to the Quran, Muhammad is should be mentioned by name as Ahmed, right? Ahmed in the Torah and Injil. They often go to Deuteronomy 18, 18, right? You heard this before, I think, right, my friend? Yes, I have. Um, yeah. So they go there. And, and that, well, yeah. the the number one thing for the Muslim is ask them did they read it, the, read the passage, yes. and not the verse, um, yes. because they could only they could only read specifically the verse. Anytime mm -hmm. they say anything above or below the verse, or he, for instance, uh, hit, hijab loves to mm -hmm. uh, chop God out of the uh, sentence and, and interject Muhammad. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, referencing that video that's been debunked left, right, and upside down. Yeah. Um, that's that's exactly. and that's not true to any word. Exactly. Man, but, but take yeah. a blasphemy. Yeah. You know, I'm trying yeah. to be nice. Even even according to to the book of Deuteronomy, I mean, if let's say let's say let us go with the Muslims, they want to show us that Muhammad is a prophet like Moses, right? That prophet like Moses, right? Did, but here's a problem. Muhammad, here's the problem. Did Muhammad that, know Allah face to face. No. Did Muhammad do miracles? Exactly. That's what I want to say. The criteria, guys, the criteria for that prophet, criteria, sorry if I'm butchering the word, the criteria of being that prophet like Moses that is talking about here in Deuteronomy, right? I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren like Moses. The criteria is that prophet must talk to God face to face. That's criteria number one. Criteria number two is he must do miracles in front of people. Did Muhammad? That's the that's the purpose of being able to perform miracles is to prove, hey, I can yeah. do that. Things exactly. are happening that cannot be otherwise explained. You yeah. need to pay attention. Yeah. If we go to the Quran, the Quran is crystal clear. We refrain from sending signs, which are miracles, and you know, other ayahs also proves that Muhammad is nothing but a mere warner, right? Mere warner. So when people ask Muhammad, why are you not giving signs like Moses? He said, yeah, because you know, even if Allah would have given me signs, Allah did not give him signs. Even if Allah would have given me signs, he would reject me anyway. So this is his accuse. You know, instead of doing miracles, you know, proving them wrong, he said, no, Allah didn't give me miracles because if I would, even if I do miracles, you will reject me. Look, look at this liar. Look at this deceiver. Right? Well, from a miracle standpoint, you know, is, Muhammad's only miracle was the ability to spill innocent blood. Yeah. I don't really classify that as a miracle, but some people <laughs> do. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly, my friend. You want to share something else, my friend? Maybe we can take other calls off to you too. Maybe you can. Uh, I don't really have anything today. Uh, I'll be okay. sure to call back later. If sure, my friend. You. Sure. Thank you for calling. God bless you. Always a blessing to hear you, my friend. I greatly appreciate your work and keep doing okay. it. Thank you, my friend. God bless. I appreciate it. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Do you have any Muslims, guys? Do we have any Muslim who has the courage and the knowledge? Let me take this call. Hello? Can you mute YouTube, please? Mute YouTube? Yes, yes, of course, of course. Hi, brother. Hi, hi, hi. Hey, you're live and air. Welcome. Yes, brother, I have a question. 
uh, in Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 144, the surah for changing the Qibla to the Masjid Al-Haram. Yeah, 144, you said? I think 144, yes, 144. Al-Baqarah, Surah 144, yes. I have, uh, I have opened Yusuf Ali. I think that's the most, the most used translation. Yes, go ahead. I have, yes. it, in, I my, have it on the my, screen. My question is, brother, uh, according to Revelation, this verse came, I think, one year or the one or one and a half year after the Hijra to Muhammad. Yes. yes. That means that 622, 623 AD. Yeah. Uh, but the Masjid Al Haram, the start for building this mosque is uh, 630. Yeah. My question is, uh, where, what is this Masjid Al Haram? Or the, where is it? Because at the time of the Hijra or at the revelation of this uh, verse, was no mosque in Mecca. Exactly. Exactly. So, in other words, history itself, right? History itself is against. Islam. Yes, yeah. yes, 100%, because mm -hmm. uh, they changed the Qibla to a place which is not yet there. It's, it's not built. Yeah. The, 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 the beginning of the building from Masjid al-Haram was 630, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, according to Muslim sources, according to the revelation, this verse came 623 A.D. It's not only that, my friend, it's not only that. There is a much bigger disaster. And I hope the people are watching and listening carefully. The reason why Muhammad, it, there's nothing called Allah, right? Muhammad and Allah are the same person, right? Yes, Jibril, you know, Jibril also, Jibril also. Yeah, yeah, there's nothing called that's, any divine uh, being or whatever. So the thing the is... Islamic you, Trinity, yes. <laughs> yeah, the problem is, and we can we can show you, that it's the plan of Omar. Omar himself is actually Allah. He is the Prophet. Watch. Omar said, this is Sahih al-Bukhari, guys. Let me scroll down. Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith number 10. Let me give you the link, guys, to the people. Please bookmark and save it. Right? This is the reference. I gave it in the live chat. Let me go back and read what Omar is saying. Narrate it NS. Omar said, I agreed with Allah in three things or said my Lord, my Allah, oh my Allah, brother, agreed with me in three things. I said, oh Allah's messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah praying on him, would that you took the station of Abraham as a place of prayer. So it was the, <laughs> it was the plan of Omar to change from praying towards Jerusalem, which Muslims, you know, that's their claim to Mecca. Do you see it? So it was Omar's plan to change the direction of prayer, not Muhammad. So Muhammad listened to Omar, right? He listened to Omar, yes, he fabricated yes, yes. the ayah, and suddenly we see in the Quran, <laughs> Allah agreeing with Omar, right? Allah agreeing with Omar. And change, and change the Qibla, yes. Yeah, and change the direction of the prayer, right? The direction of the Qibla. Qibla is basically the place that you have to pray towards so that you know that you are praying towards Mecca, to, towards the Kaaba. So it was the plan of Omar. Muhammad was scared of Omar. He listened to Omar and, and we see that Omar is actually the real prophet of Islam, not Muhammad. Muhammad was actually borrowing the ideas of Omar, putting it in the Quran. Hadouken! Boing, boing. <laughs> I think I think uh, <laughs> uh, Muhammad Muhammad say that uh, if a, a, a prophet after him will come, that will be Umar. Is this true? Yeah. Yes. 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 yes, yes. yes. Muhammad himself said it. If if would be an an uh, uh, a uh, prophet after me, it will it, the best choice is Umar, because Muhammad took many things from Umar, and you see, Allah agreed with Umar on three things. Other hadith say even five things not three but even more than three so even you know uh, the hijab and whatnot you know the hijab the veil yeah, the hijab, the it was hijab, also yes. the idea of omar you see it yeah this is the story with uh, with the wife of uh, muhammad when she yeah. go on toilet and and he start omar start to laugh yeah omar yes, omar, yeah. <laughs> yes. soda soda guys soda let me give the name in the chat 
for the people they can recognize. Soda, one of the wives of uh, Muhammad, she went to do number one or two, you know, call of nature. <laughs> and Omar, Omar, look at this disgusting, filthy Omar, this, this idiot. He has no respect for the wives of Muhammad and he saw her naked. He saw her as naked. He saw her naked ass. I kid you not. So he went, he went to Muhammad. He said, Muhammad, I saw one of your wives naked ass. You have to force all the women, you know, so they have to wear the hijab. And suddenly, suddenly Jibreel come and listens to Omar. <laughs> Crazy. Crazy. <laughs> crazy <laughs> let me give the link to the people guys let me give you this link this is Sahih al-Bukhari brother Sahih speaking from Kif Hira Hira echo echo this Chris, is Sahih this is, Sahih this is the same story with this uh, one guy uh, which is uh, who who writes for for Muhammad the the, the verses yeah and then he say uh, he is the best of the creators and Muhammad say yes write this yeah Abdullah bin Abi Sarah Yes, Abdullah yes, ibn Sarah, yes. after yes. Muhammad giving him the ayah, guys, Abdullah ibn Sarah, Abdullah ibn Abi Sarah. Right? And then he Sarah. became an apostate. He leaves, he leaves Islam because he, he see, hey, he is not a prophet. He, mm -hmm. he, he, he write the, the things down, which I say, yeah. not what Jibril gives him. So Muhammad said to uh, Abdullah ibn Abi Sarah, he said to him, Allah just gave me, the, gave me this ayah. Scri Put it down, write it down. So Ibn Ab Abdullah ibn Abi Sarah starts to write the ayah on paper, right? He starts to write it on paper, maybe on bone. You know, back in the old days, they start they wrote uh, the Quran, ayahs of the Quran on animal skin, on uh, on bones, on stones, right? So Abdullah ibn Abi Sarah starts to write, and then Abdullah ibn Abi Sarah he says, Tabarakallah Ahsan al Khalaqin. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, glory to, to the best of creators, Allah. And Muhammad hearing this, Muhammad said, yes, yes, write it down as you said, because Jibreel <laughs> told me that it's, that's the way how I got it from Jibreel. <laughs> so this guy, this Abdullah bin Sirh said, hmm, wait a second. There's something fishy going on. Those are my words. I said, Tabarakallah, Ahsan al Khalaqin. I said, Allah is the best of all creators. And you're saying that these are the words of Jibreel. That means if you are a prophet, I can be a prophet too. Because you are using my own words to write that down. You are using my words to make it Quran. So this guy was smart. He left Islam, right? He left Islam. He became an apostate. And, uh, you know, he ran. And, and he, he, go, he, go, he goes back to Mecca. And I think he was yeah. one of these five or six people which must be killed. Yeah, when yeah. Muhammad comes back to Mecca, he exactly. gave a list with five or six people. Exactly. These five guys you must kill. Yeah, you must assassinate them. And, you know, it was uh, Uthman who stepped in. Uthman, the Uthman, one of the caliphs. He said, mm -hmm. no, please don't kill him. And, you know, that's basically the story in a nutshell. Right. And so, not only so that, my friend. So we have we have Omar. We have Abdullah ibn Abi Sarh. There's a third disaster. Which one? Right? It says in this hadith the following. Uh, remember the story when Muhammad got busted by Hafza, sleeping with uh, Maria al Qubtiya, the Coptic slave? Muhammad asked Hafza to go get him something, right? When Hafza, the wife of Muhammad, Hafza, she come back, she sees that Muhammad is effing one of the slaves. One of the slaves that he got as a gift. So Hafza bust him, said, what have you done, Muhammad? You are sleeping. You have had sex on my day because it was her day, right? Her day mm -hmm. in her house. So she said to Muhammad, Hafza says to Muhammad, you are sleeping with one of the sex, it was not sex, slave, one of the slaves on my day. So then she goes to Aisha, right? She goes to Aisha. She comes with Aisha back and they start to attack Muhammad, right? I mean, Muhammad is committing adultery, right? In the bed of Aisha, in the house of, sorry, in the bed of, of Hafza, uh, in, in her house with her slave, Maria al-Qubtiya. And then Muhammad takes a vow. He promised, I'm not going to do it anymore. 
Later, Allah comes to help the penis of Muhammad. He says to Muhammad, no, do it. We gave you, it's lawful for you. It's halal, brother. Sleep with the slave. And then Omar, Omar again steps in. Guys, watch what Omar is doing. You should either stop troubling the Prophet. So it was Omar saying to Hafza and Aisha, stop busting Muhammad's balls. <laughs> Or else Allah will give his apostle Muhammad better wives than you. So Omar said to, basically it was Omar's idea to warn the, these five feet tall women, small women. I mean Hafsa and Aisha, you know, women, man. And again, Muhammad listening to the advice of Omar, suddenly an ayah comes down. If you don't stop attacking the Prophet, Allah will give you better wives. Jibreel. Yes. All is the righteous this, Muslims and yes, Allah yes. going to defend Muhammad against these two poor ladies who bust the whole, Muhammad. The whole, the whole world against two women. <laughs> yeah, so this is another ayah from, from Omar. You see Omar saying, Omar saying guys, Omar said, Allah, my Allah agreed with me with three things. And that's one of the three, right guys? When they busted Muhammad committing adultery, sleeping around with the slaves, Omar again becoming a prophet. Omar is the so, real prophet. So everybody around Muhammad was a prophet, uh, but Muhammad was not a prophet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's a sick cult, brother. You see, see very, how, very sick you see cult. how Muhammad is using Allah, right, to to save his penis. You know, you know Muhammad yes, created I, Islam for his penis, man. Aisha, Aisha also say once to Muhammad, uh, I see uh, Allah is, uh, uh, yeah, it was yeah. also let me, let sex, me help you, sex story and Aisha, yeah. Aisha, 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 said, Aisha getting busted, Aisha yeah, getting busted once. Exactly, Aisha said, Ma ara rabbuka illa yusara fi hawaka ya Muhammad. Translation, I see that your Lord hastens to fulfill your sexual desires, Muhammad. Yes, Aisha yes. knew, Aisha knew. <laughs> She knew that Muhammad is a scam. He, she knew that her husband was a liar, a deceiver, using Allah, his suck puppet, Allah, for his penis, to help him pe his penis. It's all about the penis of Muhammad. Islam is created for the penis of Muhammad. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Thank, thank you for calling, my friend. Always thank a blessing you, to uh, keep calling me, bro. I really Good. love uh, our talk. You know, you bring me with the new ideas and. Uh, we can share and show that Muhammad is nothing but a liar, right? Yes, of course. So keep, killing, That's... keep calling us. I love you, my friend. God bless you. I love you too, brother. Thank you. God Stay bless safe. you and the followers and the people in the chat room. Thank and you. have a nice day, brother. Thank you. You too, my friend. Thank you for calling. Bye bye. Bye bye. Guys, let us <clears throat> let us uh, take a small uh, break. I will continue from there. So let me go drink something. I will ask you to get something to drink too, maybe some popcorn, and we will continue from there. I better have for some coffee. Hola! One bell dance! Buenos dias. Buenos dias. Disfrute un buen café. Gracias, senor. Adios. Adios! Now that's fresh mountain grown coffee from the hills of Colombia. I better manifest some coffee. Hola! Juan Valdez! Buenos dias. Buenos dias. Disfrute un buen café. Gracias, senor. Adios. Adios! Now that's fresh mountain grown coffee from the hills of Colombia. I better manifest some coffee. Hola! Juan Valdez! Buenos dias. Buenos dias. Disfrute un buen café. Gracias, senor. Adios. Adios! Now that's fresh mountain grown coffee from the hills of Colombia. I better manifest some coffee. Hola, Juan Valdez. Buenos dias. Buenos dias. Disfrute un buen café. Gracias, señor. Adios. Adios. Ah. Now 
that's fresh mountain grown coffee from the hills of Colombia. I better manifest some coffee. Hola! One bell dance! Buenos dias. Buenos dias. Disfrute un buen café. Gracias, senor. Adios. Yeah, Rooney? Yo, Carl. Hitting the clubs? Got a case of Red Bull? Gonna pull an all-nighter. You down? Yeah. Guys. Oh, that's Rooney, my new friend Lee. He's a male nurse. <laughs> we hit a couple of raves last night. It was totally off the hook. Yeah, you seem a little hyper. I had a couple Red Bulls. Have you ever had a Red Bull? I never had a Red Bull before, but I had a Red Bull last night. I really like Red Bull. I got a new necklace. Glows in the dark. But you can't really see it right now unless you do this. That's really something. Doesn't Red Bull make you crash pretty hard? No, 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 no. I don't think so. No. Uh, no. Hey, after we jog, we should go to Red Bull. You can get a Red Bull or I get a Red Bull. We could share a Red Bull. Okay, that'd be really fun. That sounds Red good. Red I think I'd really... I'd Red Bull! Really... Red Bull! All right, guys, we are back. I'll be back. We are back. We are live again, brother. Do we have any Muslim? Hello, people who just joined. Welcome. God bless you. Do we have any callers? Do we have any Muslims? My Skype ID is the Rob Christian. Guys, is my sound still good? I hope that my sound is still good. <clears throat> is there anyone who wants to call us? Guys, I might be heard. Are you still with me, guys? Give me one, please. Okay, good. Let me take this call. Hello? Hello? Yes, sir. Uh, mute YouTube, my friend. Mute YouTube. Please mute YouTube. Hello? Hello, how are you? Hey, hi, my friend. Can you hear me? Yeah, I'm, I made a video on Hamza Zorts by his criteria. Yeah? Yeah, hold on. Yeah, by his criteria. Mm -hmm. Um, that Jesus is God by his own criteria. Yeah. Do you want it's eight minutes long? Yeah, I uh, you sent me the link. I see. Yeah, you want me to play that video? Is that yeah, what you want? Yeah, eight minutes long. Do you mind if it's eight minutes long? Yeah, it's sure. about eight minutes. No problem. Let me play the video. Thank you for okay. calling. I'll, I'm going to play the video. No problem. Uh, let's see. By the way, thank you for the super chat, Rory. Uh, let's see if we can play this video for of our brother. No problem. Uh, just a second. Is this the so, one? Yeah, I think this is the one. Before we continue to say why Allah deserves to be worshipped, let's now talk about what worship is. Worship can be described in the following way, my beloved brothers. To know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To obey Allah and to direct all our acts of worship towards Allah. Internal and external acts of worship to Allah alone. This, I feel, is a very comprehensive definition of worship. It's been taken from my previous... You see guys how this guy is lying? Uh, it's not only to obey Allah. You have to obey Muhammad and you have to obey Allah. It's not enough to obey Allah only, you liar. Shame on you. So are you saying when you worship, worship means to obey Allah and Muhammad? Is that what you're saying? You see, he removed Muhammad. You see, it, there's another ayah in the Quran where it says you have to obey Muhammad first, then obey Allah. So you see the taqiyah here, guys? And if you go to chapter 48, ayah 9, chapter 48, ayah 9, it says that you have to glorify Muhammad every morning and evening. Chapter 48, Ayah 9. You have, it's not enough to believe in Allah. You have to also believe in Muhammad and you have to glorify Muhammad every morning and evening. 
chapter 48, ayah 9. So you see how he's removing playing with the Quran? Ulama, and I think it's extremely important to define worship in this way. Because you remember, the art of Dao is using the right language. Because when you say worship to the Western audience, what do they think and feel? Physical action, Sunday service, right? But worship in Islam is very profound. We need to learn to use the right type of language in order for people to understand what worship really is. In actual fact, yeah, worship is worship Muhammad and Allah. Is You're the use of language. We spoke about this in the car, I think, a few days ago. Because, for example, I refuse to call salah prayer. If we do that, you've got it wrong. Prayer is dua. You're asking for something. <laughs> do you hear that? This is going to be a fun This is video. our brother Rory, guys. <laughs> According to his own Christ, Jesus is God. Oh, you almost blew out my ears. <laughs> so, before we continue to say why Allah deserves to be worshipped, let's now talk about what worship is. Worship can be described in the following way, my beloved brothers. To know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to obey Allah and to direct all and our to acts obey of Muhammad, worship you liar. Allah. Internal and you external liar. acts of worship Why are you moving Allah. Muhammad from the Quran? I'm going to show you from the Bible itself. Jesus See how this uh, Hamza is, is, whatever his name is, God. is lying. Yeah. Remember the criteria. Good video, uh, Rory. Very good video. I'll show you friend. the clip again, and then the four criteria. Remember that. To know Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, to love Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, to obey Allah, and to direct all our acts of worship towards Allah, internal and external acts of worship to Allah. Yeah. Four criteria. We're going to break down each one, and we're going to prove Jesus is actually God according to the Bible, mm -hmm. according to His criteria, not mine. To know Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. If you know me, you would also know my father. To love Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Exactly right. To obey Allah and Yep. No, it's not buffering from my side, guys. It's you. Allah praise it's you. And you to direct to all our right acts now. of worship towards Allah. Internal and external acts of worship to Allah alone. Worship or glorify. Glorify means to worship. It means to praise and to worship. Exactly, Rory. Just a second, my friend. I don't want to cut the video off. But let me show you guys from the Quran. Let me show you from the Quran, okay? Chapter 4, how this guy was using taqiyya. Chapter 4, uh, if I'm not mistaken, 80. You see how he removed Muhammad's name, guys? It's not enough to only obey Allah, you have to obey Muhammad first. Here, let me make this bigger. Whoever, chapter 4, Surah Anissa, Ayah 80. Whoever obeys the Muhammad, the messenger, has indeed obeyed Allah. So you have to obey Muhammad first. Then that means you're obeying Allah. So you liar, you Hamza or, 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 or Tziz or whatever this guy's name is. You liar. It's not enough to obey Allah first. It's not enough to obey Allah. You have to obey Muhammad first. Chapter 4, Ayah 80. Liars! And let me prove it even more. If we go to chapter 48, Ayah 9. Now you'll probably see a false translation. What else is new? Let me make this smaller now. Wow, that's not what the ayah is saying. Are you liars? Let me switch the translation. Let me read the Arabic first, guys, and explain what I'm trying to say. لِتُؤْمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ You have to believe in Allah. لِتُؤْمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ And His Rasul. Again, do you see? You have to believe in Muhammad. It's not enough to believe only Allah. وَرَسُولِهِ Muhammad, His Messenger. And according to the Arabic grammar rules, guys, I'm an Arabic speaker. I went to school. 
right? They taught me a couple of basic rules. The last mentioned person is Muhammad. So that means everything that comes after, according to Arabic grammar rules, all the words after the last person, which is Muhammad, go back to the last person. So all, everything that you see here highlighted, go back to Muhammad. So let us read this, guys. So you have to believe Allah and His Rasul, Rasulihi, وَتُعَزِّرُهُ You have to assist him in battle. You have to respect or honor him. وَتُوَقِّرُهُ وَتُسَبِّحُهُ بُكْرَةً وَأَصِيلًا So you have to glorify Muhammad every morning and evening. Do you see it, guys? Do you see how Muhammad made himself equal with Allah? You have to glorify him every morning and evening. Who? The Rasul. Because he is the last person. That means all the verbs. You have to, they go back to the Rasul and the Rasul alone. He is the last person. I mean, choose any language, man. Any language. The last mentioned person in a sentence like this. All the verse that come after the last person go back to the last person. Why, Rob? Let me tell you why. Because the first verb, guys, the first verb, this verb, let me put it in the live chat. This very verb explains it. How, Rob Christian? It says to assist him. To assist him out in battle, in war. So do you see that it's Muhammad? I mean, Muslims, are you telling me? If you're going, you're going to say it's only for Allah, are you telling me that Allah needs help? Allah needs help of Muslims? <laughs> no. Muhammad needs help in war. He, he's asking Muslims to fight with him. So it goes back to the Rasul. Did you catch it? You have to assist him or support him in battle. You have to honor or respect him. Who? The Rasul. And you have to who? glorify who? Muhammad. Every morning and evening. Bam! You see how Muhammad loved to be worshipped? Because glorification is an act of worship. Exactly. Thank you for that video, Rory. God bless you, my friend. Thank you for the super chat. Do you have more callers, guys? Uh, I think... Did we miss the call? No. No, we did not miss any call. Uh, any more callers, guys? Do you have any more callers? Do you have any more callers? Do you have any more callers? <clears throat> Allah praise says, Rob Christian, a Muslim told me, Surah 20, Ayah 14, says, I am Allah, worship me. Uh, let's see. Before we go there, my friend, before we go there, can we not agree on the fact that Muhammad made himself equal with Allah? Yes. If we go, before we go there, before we go to that verse, to make it even more worse for Muhammad, chapter 33, and I think one of the admins mentioned it in the chat, chapter 33, ayah 56. Let me go there. Just a second, Rory. Just a second. Let me let me let me wrap this up. Chapter thirty-three, ayah fifty-six. In Allah, in Allah, wa malaikatu yusalluna ala nabi. Ya ayuha aladina amanu, sallu alaihi wa sallimu taslima. So Allah and His angels pray on, not pray for, Mister Mimi Hijab. Mimi Hijab said to David Wood, I knew I'm going to teach you Arabic lessons today. I knew it. My friend, you said, this is why, and I quote, Mimi Hijab said, this is why the translators put four, not two. Abdul, you claim to be an Arabic expert. You claim to teach David Wood Arabic lessons, but you yourself don't know Arabic. It's not four, it's not two, it's on. Ala, it means on. You have to pray on Muhammad, on, not for, not for, not to, but on. So guys, I, I don't blame David Wood. 
I don't blame David Wood. David Wood is not an Arabic speaker like me, right? But if you, Mimi Hijab, are going to say and claim that you're an Arabic expert and you're going to say, I'm going to teach David Wood Arabic lessons, that means you are not an expert, you're a liar, you're a deceiver, you're lying about your Quran because it says Allah means on the Prophet. Allah Nabi, on the Prophet. Question, when Allah prays, to who Allah prays Muslims? It says, you saluna, right? Allah and the angels pray. When I pray, I pray to God. When Allah prays, to who Allah prays? Hmm, clearly there's nothing fishy going on, right? When Muslims going to say, it means blessing, it means blessing the Prophet, you have another problem. Why a Christian? Well, here is why. It says, in Allah wa malaikatu yusalluna. Now, when you're going to say the word is blessing, it does not mean blessing, it means praying. Because blessing is baraka. Baraka, guys, take notes. Is blessing. Yubariku, they are blessing. Do you see it? So, why did Allah not use yubariku, which is crystal clear? meaning of blessing. Why did he say you saluna? Are you telling me that Allah is the worst communicator in the whole history of all communicators? Yes. To make it more worse guys, let's say it means blessing. It doesn't mean blessing, but let's say it means blessing. Since when angels bless people, should not the blessing come from Allah? In this false translation, there's nothing called God, it's Allah. God in Arabic guys is ilah. Ilah is God, right? Allah is the name of the Islamic God, the moon idol, right? You see how they actually do taqiyah in the translation here? What else is new? So since when do angels bless Muslims? Since when do angels bless? And since when believers bless? Shouldn't the blessing come always from God? Yes. So see guys, either way, either way, we just prove that Allah, Allah is one, he's sharing his divine attribute, which means blessing, sharing his divine attribute with, with the angels and the Muslims, right? So Allah is God, the angels are God, and the Muslims are God, because when Allah is sharing his divine attribute, with the angels and the believers, you can do what Allah is doing, right? So Muslims, either way, either way, you, you and your Prophet and Allah are busted. Busted! Busted, man! No, it does not mean blessing, else Allah should have said, you bariku instead of you saluna. You bariku instead of you saluna. Because salat is prayer. Right? The root word Salat. Prayer. Baraka is blessing. Did you catch it guys? And the verbs are Yusaluna and Yubarikuna which means blessing. Yusaluna means they are praying. So Allah and the angels pray on Muhammad. But the, again the final question will be the one million dollar when Allah prays to who Allah prays? When? The one million dollar question. When Allah prays. Praise. To who? Allah prays. Muslims. Bust it. Allah prays? God, God prays? <laughs> Allah prays Muslims. Inna Allah wa malaikatu yusalluna ala nabi Yusalluna means praying, they are praying. Uh, <clears throat> Let's see what Rory said, Rob the video isn't finished. Okay, let me play the video, finish the video for you my friend, no problem. Uh, let's see, let me go back to the video. Okay. I'll show you the dictionary's definition. 
of glorified then i'm going to show you what god himself in the old testament tells people tells everyone that he's not going to share his glory to anyone these are the two definitions i have chosen um two exactly. and four it's an act of worship to honor glorified. with praise uh, admiration or worship exalt mm -hmm. to praise the glory of God, especially as an act of worship. Now that I've shown you one passage in the Old Testament from the book of Isaiah. Okay. Yeah. Exactly, Rory, exactly. This, I feel, is a very comprehensive definition of worship. It's been taken from my previous ulama, and I think it's extremely important to define worship in this way. So guys, we explained to you how they removed, as we showed you from chapter 44, ayah 80, chapter 4, ayah 80, they removed even, you have to obey Muhammad, then obey Allah. So it's not enough to obey Allah. You need to obey Muhammad. That proves that you have to worship Muhammad too, because this is what he's trying to say. Worship means you have to obey Allah. Well, if you obey Muhammad, that means you're worshiping Muhammad too. Right? <laughs> because you remember, the art of Tao is using the right language. Now I'm going to play a bonus from the Quran's criteria. I'm going to show you, well, I'm not going to show you. On, uh, don't convert to Islam is going to show you um, that Islam is idolatry according to the Quran criteria itself and then show you from the passage in the Bible where Jesus made himself equal to God according exactly. to the Quran. Exactly. Chapter 9, Ayah 31. Itself. Because he Chapter didn't 9, Ayah 31. God alone he didn't just say you father are the only true of god he also said and jesus christ he also said and jesus christ whom you have sent here's a clip hi in this video i will prove muslims are idolaters in less than two minutes in quran chapter 39 verse 45 it says idolaters do not proclaim faith in god alone but must always include the name of their idols in order to be satisfied it mm -hmm. says وَإِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهُ وَحْدَهُ شْمَأَزَّتْ قُلُوبُ الَّذِينَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْآخِرَةِ وَإِذَا ذُكِرَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ دُونِهِ إِذَا هُمْ يَسْتَبْشِرُونَ Which means, and when God alone is mentioned, the hearts of those who do not believe in the hereafter get disgusted, but when others are mentioned beside him, they rejoice. The most famous Muslim commentary on the Qur'an Tafsir ibn Kathir confirms this verse is about idolaters, saying, quote, Then Allah condemns the idolaters further, and when Allah alone is mentioned means, when it is said there is no God except Allah alone. Now, does the Muslim testimony of faith mention and include any other name beside the name of their God? Or are the Muslims satisfied with proclaiming their God alone? Although it's not mentioned in any single verse of the Qur'an, the Muslim testimony of faith, or shahada, is... لا إله إلا الله ومحمد رسول الله which means there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is the messenger of Allah mm -hmm. so as you see here Muslims are not satisfied with proclaiming God alone instead they add a further testimony for Muhammad therefore according to their own Quran Muslims are condemned as disbelievers for idolizing Muhammad Muslims I call you all to repent of your Islamic idolatry and embrace the one true God of the Bible God Amen. So guys, did you did you catch what he what this brother just said? It's not enough to only say Ashhadu la ilaha illallah. You have to include Muhammad's name else it's not complete, right? Actually, this is why you see many Muslims become Quran only. When you ask a Quran only Muslim, a Quran only Muslim who only follows the Quran, he reject hadith because they are ashamed of the hadith, right? They are ashamed of their prophet. They only accept Quran. When you ask them, is the shahada shirk? They will say yes, because 
Sunni Muslims, the Shia Muslims, they include the name of Muhammad together in one sentence with Allah. That's shirk. That's blasphemy. Did you catch it? So the Shahada, the Shahada, the Islamic Shahada, La ilaha illallah wa Muhammad, blah, 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 is nothing but shirk. It's nothing but blasphemy. Exactly. God bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Good stuff, Rory. Good stuff. I like your video. Now that I've shown you two passages, to the clip, the video, and the passage in the Bible, come to your own conclusions. Isn't it true that according to these passages are shown, and according to Hamza's criteria and the Quran's criteria, that Jesus is God Almighty Himself? Decide for yourself and come to your own conclusions. Okay. Thank you, Rory. Good. Bless you, my friend. That's all I wanted to say. Peace. I enjoyed making this video. I love it. Us too. And Thank you for uh, sharing this video, Rory. Uh, Muslims and Christians. I'm not a Christian, by the way, but I hope Muslims and Christians have a fruitful discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Rory, for this video, my friend. God bless you, my friend. I really hope that you one day be, will become a Christian, right? You'll become a Christian and we can call you a brother in Christ. I really do. I really hope for you, Rory, that you will become a Christian. And I sense that one day you're very close because you're quoting biblical verses that one day you'll become a Christian, my friend. Uh, guys, actually the Quran, chapter 9, ayah 31, let me go there. Chapter 9, Ayah 31. Guys, pay attention, please. اتخذوا أحبارهم ورهبانهم ورهبانهم أرباب من دون الله والمسيحة. That means they have taken their rabbis and monks, their rabbis and monks, so their scholars and monks as lords besides Allah. Wa here you see the this small letter here it means end wa means end guys pay attention this small letter here wa means end in arabic so they have taken their rabbis and monks sorry their their uh their scholars and monks as lords besides allah and al masih so who are the real lords those are Allah plus El Masih, Christ. Did you catch it, guys? So here the Quran is attacking Christians who have taken their rabbis and their monks, their scholars and their monks, as lords besides Allah wa El Masih. This is false translation. The Arabic does not say what here what it says here. The Arabic is clear. They have taken their rabbis and monks as Lords are Baban as lords, Min Duni besides Allah and the Messiah. Did you catch it? So who are the lords? Allah and the Messiah. So chapter 9, ayah 31 proves that Jesus, the Islamic Jesus, Jesus, who they call Isa, is equal to Allah. Jesus is equal to Allah. He is the Lord besides Allah. The only Lord is Al Masih besides Allah. No one else. Did you catch it? False translation, you filthy scumbag. Why are you lying about the Quran? Arbery. See, uh, take any uh, translation. Look, I challenge you. Look, look at this disgusting translation, guys. I challenge you to show me Ilah in the Arabic here. I challenge you. And I challenge you to show me a second Ilah. Look how many times. One. Two, three, three times God is mentioned. The, show me three times the word God. I challenge you. First of all, Ilah is not mentioned. Ilah means God. It's not mentioned. It says Allah. Do you see it? Allah, once. Here, this false translation, three times. You see how they are adding to the Quran of Allah, guys? Do you see when Muslims translate, they are adding words to the Quran in their translation? This is why you 
cannot trust this is why let me put it in the chat this is why you cannot trust any translation we always keep telling you that guys you cannot trust any translation for the Quran sorry for the English guys but you get the idea did you catch it you see how they're doing taqiyya? it does not say that you you right they have taken their rabbis their scholars and monks as lords beside Allah and the Messiah so who are the lords who are the Arbab those are Allah and the Messiah you see how Jesus is actually equal to Allah he is God together with Allah in Islam false translation exactly Poland this is nothing but false translation filthy liars man take any translation you'll see that they are nothing but liars anyone any translation again using the word God there's nothing called God it's Allah Allah is the name of the Islamic God Ilah means God as we explained earlier Ilah the word Ilah means God Ya Ilahi my God I don't say my Allah I say my Ilahi my God Ya Ilahi my God Ya Ilahi I'm invoking my God Ya Ilahi so how did Ilah become Allah <laughs> disgusting liars adding their own interpretation inside the Quran doing bid'ah which is reforming right it's haram to do bid'ah in Islam guys bid'ah is haram that means you are changing you are reforming you are adding your own words into the Quran it's one of the biggest sins in Islam when you play with the Quran of Allah doing bid'ah disgusting liars man shame on you but we know Muslim Imams, Muslim translators, Muslim shiyukh, Muslim ustaz, they don't have any shame, they don't have any honor or dignity. Liars! Yeah, confirmed shirk, exactly, because the only Arbab are Allah and the Messiah. The only lords, according to this ayah, are Allah and the Messiah. Busted! Uh -huh. Speaking from Kaif, Hira, Hira, Muslims, why are you not worshipping the Messiah? Because here he's equal to Allah. Clearly you see that Muslims, when they read the Quran, they don't understand what they read. The Lords are Allah and the Messiah. Right? Bastid, Bastid, Bastid. Aha! Any Abdul? Son of Abdul, any Abdul who dares to call us life on air? Any Abdul who, who, who has the courage and the knowledge to call us? We are life on air. Any Abdul? Lying is a must in Islam, Rob. Exactly, Carl. You have to lie. You know, we always tell you guys. You know, guys, let me put it this way. I receive a lot of comments from people. I kid you not. Rob Kushin, why are you so aggressive? Why are you so harsh with Muslims? Well, here is why. A true Christian should not respect any liar or deceiver. My Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, he called liars and deceivers agents of Satan, like the leaders of the Sanhedrin, right? The Sanhedrin leaders, those Jewish leaders, he called them a brood of vipers. G My God insulted those agents of Satan. Are you telling me that I should not follow what my Jesus did and said? I am a Christian, I am a follower of Christ. My Christ, my Lord, my Savior insulted those agents of Satan. Are you telling me to stop being a Christian? People, so-called Christians here in the West, are you telling Rob Christian to stop being a follower of Christ? Is that what you're trying to tell me? Yeah, he, Jesus called these evil sons of Satan. He called them snakes, vipers. Jesus flipped tables on t people's heads. Jesus flipped tables in the temple. He used the whip. Are you telling me to stop being a Christian? <laughs> you know, and this is, you know, this is why, you know, you Christians, man. 
Some Christians think that uh, Christianity is a hippie religion. Singing Kumbaya, my Lord, Kumbaya, all day long. All right? No, my friend, my Christ was a warrior. And since I'm a follower of Christ, I'm going to be a warrior like my Christ. Like my Lord. Uh, Rob, you're a joke. Call me. Let's see who's the joke. Let us separate the men from the jokes. Mr. Uh, Christian Prince Ears, brother. Yeah, top, top. <laughs> Any Abdul? Any son of Abdul? Yalla, yalla, yalla. Yalla, ya khwan. Trofina sal'ouk bain al muluk. Huh? Wherever you go, whenever you try out your luck with us, we will spank you left and right. You cannot do anything about it. Only thing you can do is cry in the live chat. Hello, Vanessa. Welcome. You're live on air, sister. Hello, brother. Hey, how I, are you? I, there is. Um, yes. See, you said um, I'm listening to you, but it, mm -hmm. it's him. So, sister, sister, you try again because that, you're breaking up. Um, all the things you are saying, Vanessa, I, I, Vanessa, I said that maybe long. Vanessa, sister, uh, you sound like a robot. You sound yeah. like a robot. Can you can you do something about your? Connection? Ah, okay. I said I'm listening to you here. Yeah. Now it's better. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh. Okay. Oh, can you hear me now? Yeah, go ahead. Try. Yes. Um, all the things you are saying now, I guess you sent you said that Yes. Um, Sis sister, your connection is really bad. Sorry. Yeah. Um, uh I I can't I can't understand what she's saying. She's act you know her connection. I think his connection is not good. Vanessa, sister, fix your connection and then try to call me back, please. <clears throat> Rob Christian, you liar! <laughs> it doesn't say that, RC. Yeah, her voice is buffering exactly. Yeah. Uh, Vanessa, can you can you do something about your connection and then try to call me again, sister? Let me put it in. A... Connection is bad. <clears throat> We don't understand what you're saying, sister. Sound is not clear. Yeah. So try to fix your connection and call me, please. Do you have any Abdul who has the courage and the knowledge to call us? Uh, Christian Prince Ears, you idiot. Listen, you said I am blocked you, rat. You know who the real rat is? Your prophet. Your prophet is the real rat. Your prophet died like a rat. He was poisoned like a rat. So the only rat is your prophet, no one else. You idiot. Your prophet is the real rat. He was poisoned like a rat and he died like a rat. All right. Thank you for bringing up the word rat because we, now we can use it against your prophet in the court of law. <laughs> Idiot. Everything you say will be used against you and your prophet in the court of law. You don't like it? Not my business. Any Muslim? Yeah, you, you would you would rape your prophet because he's a rat. I understand. He, guys, he wants to rape his prophet, the rat prophet who died like a rat by poisoning at the hands of a Jewish woman. By the order of Allah. Allah said, if Muhammad would have lied, fabricating things against him, Allah will cut off the aorta of Muhammad. And we know how Muhammad died, right guys? Let me show you. Chapter 69. Uh, let me go there. Let's see. Let me make this bigger. وَلَوْ تَقَوَّلَ عَلَيْنَا بِبَعْضِ الْأَقَاوِيلِ لَأَخَذْنَا مِنْهُ بِالْيَمِينِ ثُمَّ لَقَطَعْنَا مِنْهُ الْوَتِينِ So Allah is saying, if Muhammad fabricated things, we will grab him by, our right, by, by the right hand and we would have cut his aorta. And we know how Muhammad died. Hello, Vanessa. Uh, 
you have connection. Okay, I, hello, can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, Brother, try, bro. try again, sister. Yeah, try again. Okay, but you can hear me now. Yeah, yeah, I can. Go ahead. Okay. No, I was just listening to you. You know, mm -hmm. I slept off and I woke up listening to your voice. Mm -hmm. And you said that the greatest sin in Islam yes. is when they uh, change the words of Allah. One of the I greatest, think. yeah. Yeah, they change, they play the and do bid'ah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah but, but this is what they do all the time, brother. Yeah, exactly. I don't think they, don't, I don't think they have a religion. This is what they do all the time. Yeah. Well, if you follow they, Satan, they, they, they yeah, if you follow yeah. Satan and, and Allah claims to be the best of all deceivers, Khairul Makarin, yeah. the best of all deceivers, that means you can use the deception of Allah. Exactly. exactly. Yeah, I mean, I mean Allah, Allah, says, Allah says in the Quran that he has a spirit. He mm. breathed into, into uh, Mary. Yeah, Mary's her vagina. Jedi. Yeah, in her vagina. Yes, yeah, yeah. yes. breathed into his uh, spirit. <laughs> <laughs> like a balloon. <laughs> Imagine Allah is giving oral... <clears throat> Uh, uh, to and look at how they butchered. Mary, yeah. Look at how they butchered his word. Yeah. They said he doesn't have a spirit. Okay, well maybe Jibril is a spirit. Look at how they butchered him. My sister, him. if Muslims so say, I mean, but wait a second, if Muslims say Allah has no spirit, that means Allah is dead. I mean, how can you be alive exactly. if you don't have a spirit, right? Exactly. So they change, hmm. they change and manipulate Allah's word as they wish. Yeah. So they do not have a religion. There yeah. is no religion. It's it's all a, it's all a fraud. It's all yeah. a game. Yeah. Well, Allah says Allah says pray three times. Yeah. They say pray. Uh, uh, what's his name? Muhammad says pray five times. Yeah. Exactly. What else? I mean, they yeah. change Allah's what Allah says. Allah says, um, why do you worship me? Talking to the, uh, the, the Jesus of Islam. Yeah. Why do you wash? Why do why do people worship? Uh, Mary, uh, the, 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 the monks and their rabbis besides uh, Jesus and uh, and Allah. They said, no, 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 it's, it doesn't mean it like that. Yeah. This is what it means, it's Trinity and this and that. See, yeah. they change Allah's word, so I do not believe there is Allah. Yeah. Allah does not exist. They are all... Yeah. I mean, the, 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 the Islamists, especially the Arabs, are out for one thing. Yeah. They want their, I believe they want their, their bat right back. I don't know whether they, 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 they come from Esau. Really, I don't know. Mm. They might be Canaanites uh, they, in the Bible. They might be, because all the Arabs came together and they all formed one nation of Arab, but they did not belong together before. So I do not believe there is Allah. I believe somebody cooked up all these things, and uh, the more you dig into it, the more you find the truth. L like one one uh, uh, um, caliph paid Ibn Ishaq to yeah. to make Jesus, to make uh, well, what's his name Muhammad look like Jesus, and so on and so forth. Yeah, yeah, the one who wrote the biography, the Sira Nabawiya, was written by exactly. Ibn Ishaq. Is Haqya yeah, trying yes. to, you know, to make uh, Muhammad look like uh, Jesus exactly? Yes. So yeah. the one on the top, the one at the top, they yeah. know what is really happening. Yeah. The, the 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 sheep that is following them, you know, the 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 the, the victims, the ones mm -hmm. that are so sincere, worshiping Allah that does not exist. Those yeah. are the victims. Those are the one my heart goes out for. Yeah. Because I don't believe there is a religion called Islam. It's all a fraud. Yeah. So there is no Allah. The way is is the great one of the greatest uh, uh, share. Yeah. There is no Allah. They butcher their Allah anytime they want to suit their own purpose. Yeah. So brother, I don't want to keep you long. I just wanted to say that I think that ever since I'm into this uh, Islam thing, mm -hmm. I, have, I realize more and more. Mm. That there are some people at the top who mm. knows really who they are worshipping. And they might know, those ones at the top might really know what they are into. Yeah. But for money and for their own, uh, you know, for money, because they have so many businesses with connected with this Islam. Yeah. You know, and with the one I raised into, the one I found out was the, was the one going on in Mauritania or Malaysia where more than half of the country are prostitutes. 
Yeah. And I can mm-hmm. imagine. Uh, imagine. Yeah. yeah they, they are different. Disgusting. They have their different sex waves. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, brother, uh, let me let you. Yeah, Sister Finessa, before you go, you know, maybe you've seen yeah. one of the Muslims in the live chat. You know, he was calling us rat and whatnot. Rat, right? So I told him, uh, well, your prophet whatever. your prophet was poisoned by a Jewish woman and he died like a rat. He was poisoned like a rat and he died like a rat. And Allah, you know, you know, we don't believe that Allah is God. But if we go by the Muslim sources, we can see that Allah is the one who cut off the aorta of Muhammad. Why? Here is why. If we go to the hadith, we go to Sahih al-Bukhari, we can read. Muhammad himself confirming that his aorta is being cut off. Right? There's nothing called as if in the Arabic. It says, Wajatu an qata'a abhari. Right? Wajatu an qata'a means I see, I feel that my aorta is being cut off. So there's nothing called, a, yeah, there's nothing called as if. It is, this is added. This is bid'a, doing bid'a again, lying in the translation. It says in the Arabic, I feel that my aorta is being cut. So Muhammad confirming that he died like a rat by poison and his aorta is being cut. So if we go to the Quran, we see that Allah saying, if Muhammad fabricating sayings, you see, if Muhammad fabricated sayings against Allah, Allah will grab him by the right hand and he will cut off his aorta. So by going through the Muslim sources, Quran and Sahih Bukhari, we can conclude Muhammad saying, my aorta is being cut off and who did that? Allah himself. You see it, guys? Allah himself. So Muhammad and, and, died and like he, a rat. He was poisoned yeah. like a rat. He was he, he died like a rat. Bam! In your faces, Muslims. So when you say, when you dare to mention the word rat, the only rat who died like a rat by poisoning is your prophet. Exactly. Brother, you mm. look, you do not have to speak Arabic to be mm. able to understand things anymore. Mm. What you guys do, brethren, what you do, just go to their uh, website where they uh, have Quran. Copy mm-hmm. it with your with your with your cursor. Copy it. Take it to Google and translate. Yeah. Muslims don't have that excuse anymore. You don't speak Arabic. Yeah. All their false translations they mm-hmm. are exposed. You don't need uh, Arabic speaker. Well, of course, we need Arabic speakers. But if you really want to know what the Quran is saying. Just go online. All yeah. the translation, whatever. Yeah, well, sister, not all the translation. Let me tell you a secret. Actually, only ten yes. percent, only ten percent of the Muslim sources are translated. I kid you not. There are so many, so many hadith, so much embarrassing hadith that that they don't dare to translate because they know because if they're going to translate it, uh, it, it will become even more worse for Islam because then. Yes. Non-Arabic speaking Christians are going to use the hadith against Muhammad in the court of law, in the court of law to prove that Muhammad is nothing but a fake prophet. So they don't dare to translate everything because if they're going to do it, it's going to become even more worse. So only around 10% is translated. That's exactly what I mean. You know, this is what I learned from you and from, uh, what's his name, from Christian Prince. Christian Prince copies all the time. It will say, when you listen to him, you will say, look, 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 uh, look at all the uh, uh, Arabic words. Where yeah. is the translation? Then yeah. it will copy and paste it in Google. And mm. that is what I do now. Mm. You see? The, yeah. In fact, even if the, translate, yeah. if the translation is there, mm. I still copy. I mm. want to see what exactly uh, Google will translate for me. Yeah, exactly. Just to make Google. sure. Yeah, just to make sure. Exactly. Yes, just yeah. to make sure. Yeah. Because I do not trust this thing called religion of Islam. Mm-hmm. I do not believe it's a religion. No, I it's believe not. it's deeper than that. Yeah. And they follow the the, 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 the sheepy the sheepy followers, they don't know what is happening. Look, why is it? I come from a country during Ramadan, after Ramadan, they must commit uh, bloodshed. Why do they kill people after Ramadan? It's yeah. a it's something from the pit of hell. The people that are using them to commit murder, they know what is going on. The Muslims, they don't know what is going on. They have just been fed with hatred. Yeah. You understand? 
So I just pray, I'm praying for them. I mean, Muslims are now my point of prayer because many of them are victims. They don't know what is going on. And they mm. keep them, you know, the, the top ones, the top imams and everything, they keep them low. They keep give them low key in the sense that they are poor and everything so yeah. they can do anything for money. Exactly. You understand? Sister, exactly. That? Yes. Islam is business for the imams, exactly. You know, yeah. they are they are preying on the poor victims. You know, they know the majority of the Muslims they don't know Arabic, so they you know Islam is a big business for these imams. You know, go any imam, any Muslim imam, Sheikh Rustas, they all drive Mercedes or uh, big Benz. You know, uh, BMW five. You know, <laughs> and they said uh, yeah. Boko Haram. Boko yeah. Haram, someone was explaining to me that yeah. Boko Haram is Arabic and it means Western education forbidden. Is that correct? Uh, I, I, Boko, I, I don't know. Uh, no, I don't think that Boko is an Arabic word. I never heard of an, an Arabic word that says Boko, but maybe I'm mistaken. Maybe there is a Muslim who can teach us our language. No, Boko Haram is not an Arabic word. No. But Haram, Haram means, means you know, something that is uh, against Sharia, you know. It's uh, you yes. can't uh, yes. you can't do that. Haram is Arabic word, but uh, yeah. Boko? No, I don't know what Boko is. No. <laughs> yeah, they don't. They don't want the, the girls to go to school and everything, and mm -hmm. so they kidnap them just because they want to keep them in the dark. Yeah. Western education enlightens your mind, yeah. but they do not want their minds to be enlightened just as they do in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. In Afghanistan, the girl is not allowed to go to school. You I go know, to school, they, yeah. they want to keep. They want to keep the women stupid, right? They don't want the uh, uh, little girls to study because the moment the women become more smarter than the men, you know, it's going to become a disaster for the, you know, for Even the men. They want only the, uh, the women to to bear children. You know, they are nothing but yes. uh, fields to be plowed, right? They will only yes. put their seeds in the women to get them jihadi boys, right? Jihadi children. Yes. To fight and they them. will be proud they, 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 they slaughter their children like one woman i was watching the mm. woman like a part I, I, I think palestinian woman all her nine children or how many children they mm. have died as jihadists yeah. and she said uh, yes uh, she's proud uh, allah allah gave her this uh, you know i'm like wow yeah. yeah this kind of mindset how do you change only god can change that kind of mindset yeah, yeah. a woman loses a son one after another and she came out and said and he's blessing allah that allah uh, gave her this opportunity yeah <sighs> yeah that's crazy. so brother I, well, yeah. you know this religion so, is created by an idiot uh, a warmonger a, a stealer of other people's wife uh, a pedophile, uh, someone who robs caravans. It's 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 this religion is for evil people and stupid people who want to stay stupid. Nothing but zombies, brain dead people, and it's a shame that anyone really, is inside this religion in 2020. Exactly. You know, you it's like you are going through a brick wall, talking to them like, hey, wake up. Yeah. yeah. They have been conditioned yeah. from their mother's milk conditioned even mm. coming to the western world even yeah. being born in the western world that mm. mindset they start with them very young yes and it's only god that can that can remove the veil because it's a huge veil like yeah. they put this veil this very black veil on their car like yeah. this is how the veil is on their eyes exactly. only god can help exactly sister Anyway, brother, I don't want to take too much of your time. Thank you that you always pick up my phone all the time. I do not know, brother, how to send money. I don't use PayPal. I don't use anything. My mind goes out mm. to you. People. Your calls, your calls from are enough, sister. It's a blessing to have you on my live show. Uh, keep calling us. I love you in Christ. You are a dear Thank sister of mine. Uh, God bless you. God bless your family and uh, keep the faith. You're you're a, a true warrior, lioness in Christ, sister. Thank you for calling. Thank you, brother. God bless you. God bless you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Oh, you know, you know, it is what it is, guys. You must be an idiot. You must be a, a fool, a brain-dead guy to follow this evil cult, this death cult, this satanic religion, this religion that is created for a man and only for one man, Muhammad. 
for his penis, for his sexual desires. Aisha knew, guys. It's never enough to remind you this. Aisha, the mother of the believers, the baby bride of Muhammad. Aisha said, Ma ara rabbuka illa yusara fi hawaka ya Muhammad. Aisha knew that her husband is nothing but a scam. She said, I see that your Lord always hastens to fulfill your desires. And she meant his, her, his sexual desires for men, for, for women, sorry, for women. You know, he only wanted to have as much women in his bed as he could. More than 60 women Muhammad had relationship with. More than 60 women. I'm talking about sex slaves, wives, all kind of women. More than 60 women. I kid you not. If we go through the Muslim sources, more than 60 women. Can you imagine? So, you know. This is a religion created by a cult leader and in the end a cult leader like Muhammad loves to be worshipped. We showed you enough proof from the Muslim sources that Muhammad made himself equal with his Allah. He loved to be glorified every morning and evening. Ch chapter 48, ayah 9. Chapter 48, ayah 9. Muhammad must be glorified by the Muslims every morning and evening. It's not enough to obey Allah. First you have to obey Muhammad, then obey Allah. Chapter 4, Ayah 80. Chapter 4, Ayah 80. It's not enough to obey Allah. First you have to obey Muhammad, then you obey Allah. Prove that this is nothing but a pagan religion. Guys, thank you for your support, for your amazing support. Thank you so much, guys. God bless you. God bless your families. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click on that notification bell. If you want to subscribe to Facebook, you will want to become a subscriber there. That's my link. If, and if you want to support our full-time ministry, you can do that on Patreon. Let me take this call and then we'll wrap this up. Hello? Your life on air. Welcome, my friend. Hello, brother Rob. How you doing today? I'm good, my friend. Welcome. How are you? I'm doing very good. Very good. Um, I have some good news, and I got a question first. You um, I kind of missed what you said. You said something about the hadith that says the a order as I, if. Could you repeat that, please? Um, yeah. It doesn't. Say yeah. If. Here, let me read the Arabic first. All right. This is the hadith. This is from Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith number 44. Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith number 44, 28. All right? Sahih al-Bukhari. Muhammad is saying, وَجَدْتُ أَنْ قَطَعَ أَبْهَرِي Meaning, I feel, I see, I feel that my aorta is being cut from that poison. So, Muhammad does not say as if, as if it's not there in the translation. It's not there in the Arabic. They are adding Words that are not in the Arabic. So Muhammad is saying, I feel that my aorta is being cut from that poison. Right? Al-Sam, from that poison. Dalik al-Sam, from that poison. <laughs> so, and by going, what Muhammad said, confirming that he died like a rat by poisoning, we can confirm chapter 69, ayah 46, saying, Allah, if he sees that Muhammad is fabricating sayings, false sayings about Allah, Allah will grab him by the right hand and he will cut off his aorta. Do you see it? Right. Okay. Okay. I got another question too, because you speak Arabic. So that's a, that's a plus. Yes. Okay. I got another question. I, um, I, I, I speak Arabic. Yeah. Okay. I got another question. You know, the, um, the Hadith that speaks about Muhammad saying that every Muslim have a jinn attached to them. Yeah. And he said that he even has one, and he says that it commands him to do good. Now, in the Arabic, um, does it say that he has a uh, shaitan? Uh, in that what can you, yeah, in what's, the what's the, uh, can you give me a couple words so we can put the hadith okay. on the screen? Okay, if you type in the, um, the search box, if you yes. type jinn, if you type jinn, space, attached 
It'll come up. That's interesting. Okay, let's see. Uh, how, uh, let's see. I get one hadith. Is that from Abdullah bin Mas'ud reported at Allah's message? That one? Yes. Okay, let me put it on the screen. Let's see. I hope this is the one. Do you want me to read it? Um, I want you to. Uh, my question is, um, does that jinn, what word do they use in the Arabic? Do they say shaitan or do they say jinn? What word do they use in the Arabic? Uh, let's see. It's It says a shaitan. Al shaitan. That's, that's what devil. it says in the Arabic? Yes. Al shaitan is the name of that master jinn. He's the leader of all the jinn. Shaitan, the devil himself. And here they put it, here they put it between brackets. So they should actually remove the brackets, remove the word jinn. It's the shaitan, the devil, shaitan. You see it, guys? This is the word, right? Okay. Um, so in that hadith, it says, okay, what that see, gets... See here, here, let, here, even on top, if you go to the name of the chapter, bro, brother, chapter, mm -hmm. the mischief of the shaitan. Do you see it, guys? Shaitan. Oh. The mischief of the shaitan. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So that means that that Muhammad when he says he was commanded by Shaitan. Yeah. yeah, there is no none amongst you with which with whom is not an attache from amongst the, the Shaitan, nothing called jinn, Shaitan. They, the companion said, Allah's messenger, with you too. <laughs> so uh, Muhammad his his accompany, right? His companion, his partner in crime is the shaitan so muhammad has his own personal shaitan and who is that shaitan is the leader of the shayateen the leader so it's the devil himself thereupon he said yes so muhammad his partner in crime is the shaitan but allah helped wow. me against him and so i'm safe from him from his hand and he does not command me but for good wait a second since when do Shayateen, the devil, since when does the, the, the you know, the accursed Satan, Satan, right? They always say a Shaitan al Rajim, the one who is getting uh, stones thrown at him, right? How is right. the Shaitan doing any good, guys? Do you see, do you see this is us, guys? Since when do, does the devil do anything good? I mean, he's the father of all lies, right, guys? Shaitan wow, doing something good? So, which, which role in the Arabic? is the word shaitan could you i'm not looking at the screen right now but i'm gonna go back and watch I, I highlighted, could you like i i highlighted the word al shaitan so they actually use al shaitan and not jinn so they lie yes yes, yes. jeez but if you just go just make sure to go to the chapter name it says 16 then you can read chapter the mischief of the shaitan and how he sends troops to tempt people it, the, I mean, the, the chapter name, expose it away, right? Explain it away. And the word that is highlighted, al-shaytan. And also, I wanted to share something like, like to show that um, Muhammad, basically, he did a, uh, what I like to call a satanic versus version 2.0. Um, if you go to the hadith, and if you write in... The search box, if you write in, so if I forget, remind me. Let's see if I can get it. And it's the one narrated by Abdullah. Mm. Uh, let's see if I can find that one. The Messenger of Allah prayed Zuhr, that one? Uh, I get a lot of... Uh, Results back. Uh, the maybe of Allah. offered could... prayer. Offered prayer. That one. No, it's narrated Abdullah. Um, the prophet prayed, and the sub narrator Ibrahim said, "I do not know whether he prayed more or less than usual." And when he had finished his prayers, he was asked, "O oh, Allah's apostle." So, if you write in doubtful I... about his. Prayer. Okay, I think I found it. Just a second, let's see. Just a second, my friend. Uh, let me make it smaller. The Prophet prayed, 
and the subnator Ibrahim, that one, right? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, read it, is, my friend. Something... Okay. Okay. Narrator Abdullah. The prophet prayed and the sub narrator Ibrahim said, I do not know whether he prayed more or less than usual. And when he had finished the prayers, he was asked, O oh Allah's apostle, has there been any change in the prayers? He said, what is it? The people said, you have prayed so much and so much. So the prophet bent his legs, faced the Qibla and performed two prostrations of Sahu and finished his prayers with Taslim by turning his face to right and left saying, I don't know that part. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Yeah. Okay. When he turned his face to us, he said, if there had been anything changed in the prayer, surely I would have informed you, but I am a human being like you and liable to forget like you. So if I forget, remind me. And if any one of you is doubtful about his prayer, he should follow what he thinks to be correct and complete his prayer accordingly and finish it and do two prostrations. Now, what happened right here, what I want to tell the people, Muhammad made the worst mistake ever. When he said, so if I forget, remind me, and if any one of you is doubtful about his prayer, he should follow what he thinks to be correct. The moment he said that, yeah. he actually <laughs> committed against the opening chapter of the the Quran, which is the Al Fatiha. Can you bring that up, uh, yes. Mr. Rob Christian? Yes. The Al Fatiha? Yes. Okay. It's on the screen. Okay. In the Al Fatiha, it reads, I'm not looking at the screen right now, but it reads something about that they should pray that Allah guides them on the right path. No, Allah is saying, Correct? Allah is saying, Allah is saying Himself, please Allah guide me to the straight path. Because when we right. say when we ask Muslims who is talking, they will say Allah. So Allah is saying, Allah, please guide me to the restraint. So Allah is asking for guidance, right? Because it does not say Qul, right? If they if if here it started with Qul, then that mm -hmm. would be a different story. Say, but it does not say say the word say, right? So Allah is asking maybe to Himself, maybe a different God, maybe Muhammad, maybe Isa, who knows, to be guided right. to the straight path. Yeah. I Know that, but they yeah. they do pray that Al Fatiha five times a day, right? Yeah, they they pray five times a day and they repeat it seventeen times in total, at least seventy times. Okay. Yeah. All right. So my point was, they pray according to what they believe in. You just pointed out that is Allah saying yeah. Allah guides from the path, but according yeah. to what they believe, they're supposed to pray for Allah to guide them on the right path. Yes. But as you see in the Hadith. It's two problems. Number one, according to what they think, Muhammad told him to do the opposite thing. He's telling them to guide themselves. And not only that, he says, which goes against the Quran. And not only that, he says to pray what they think is correct, which is the, the biggest problem. Because what if they think it's correct to pray to the three daughters of Allah? Yeah. He gave them the green light. So that. that that destroys Islam. Yeah, what do exactly. they think to? Wow. Yeah. You give them, yeah, he, he just destroyed Islam when he did that. Yeah. And also um, the Qibla, for instance, because it says he says that if there had been anything changed in the prayer, that includes turning the face to Qibla, uh, the, the prostrations. So he's telling them if he forgets anything to remind him. And if they are doubtful about their prayer, they should follow what they think is correct. So that also means if they think it's not correct to face the Kaaba in Mecca, yeah. then they don't have to do it because he just told them to go by what you think is correct. So they could face the Statue of Liberty and mm. they'll be correct. They exactly. could say something blasphemous. Mm. They, could, they could say something blasphemous against Allah mm. and they would be correct. So anything they could they say, they could associate in their prayer Allah with another God and they would be correct because he just yeah. told them to follow what they think is correct. Yeah. So this totally destroys Islam. Yeah. And my friend, it's not only that, right? We can also find uh, that Omar saying that Allah agreed with him. You know, some sources say five, other sources say three. 
You know, it's it's funny, you know, since you mentioned the Qibla, Allah agreed with Omar. <laughs> it seems that Allah always agrees with Omar, saying, you know, uh, you know, he's the one who, you know, who gave Muhammad the idea to change the Qibla direction, right? So Allah agreed with uh, Omar. Omar saying, I said, oh, Allah's mission, what did you to take this Abraham as a place of prayer? So Muhammad listening to Omar, changing the direction of prayer from Jerusalem to now Mecca. And not only that, when Muhammad, his wife, Sauda, right? She went to uh, do number one or two, you know, the call of nature. Omar saw her as naked. And Omar said, you know, uh, Muhammad, we need, we need to do something, man. I just saw Sauda naked. Look at this disgusting guy. You're looking at a married wife's, the wife of Muhammad himself, the prophet of Islam. You see her naked ass, right? So he went to Muhammad and said, you know, they need to take a veil. And then Allah again agreeing with him about the hijab, right? And it's highlighted. So that's number two. And number three, you know, it's when Muhammad get busted by Hafza and Aisha, Muhammad committing adultery with Maria Al-Qubtiya, the slave of Hafza. Then again, Allah, you know, Omar says, you know, when I come to one of his wives, she said to me, oh, Omar, does Allah's messenger... What haven't we could have advised wives with that advice to them? Then Allah revealed it may be if he divorce you, it may be if he divorce you. So again, Allah agreeing with Omar, it may be if he divorced you, his Lord will give him instead of you wives better than you, Muslims who submit to Allah, chapter 66, ayah 5. So again, Allah agreeing with Omar, if Hafza and Aisha would not stop busting the balls of Muhammad, Allah will divorce him and give him. Give Muhammad better wives than Hafza and Aisha. And all the angels, including Jibreel, all the righteous Muslims, and Allah himself will, will stand against Hafza and Aisha. <laughs> and, and, and Rob, it's and, and, yeah. crazy. And, and you know what else? Yeah. You know what else? The Bible, it gives us a forewarning to prevent us from going by what we feel is correct. Because in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, it says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and Amen. lean not unto your own understanding. Amen. In, all, Amen. in yeah. all ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy exactly. paths. But exactly. Muhammad was telling his, his servants to direct their own path. So mm -hmm. what's the use of him? How is he the final messenger if... He instructed them to create their own message and to follow yeah. their own path. Exactly. That's a so, huge, huge disaster. Imagine if I yeah. think that something is correct, but it's in fact, it's satanic. So Muhammad telling me to do what I think is correct, right? That's a disaster. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Hey, I got one more question about a translation of something. Um, I heard it on a Christian print show about, um, do you know that Hadith that says... And he said this a long time ago. He said something about the blood of Shaykh flows through like Muhammad because he was speaking to his um, companions and they asked Ooh. him. He was like, like um, on Muhammad, he was speaking to his companions. I think I think I know which hadith you're talking about. Let me put it on the screen. Just Could you read it? In because they made they I believe they. They twisted the words up some to the try prophet to correct. Said, yeah, the prophet said, Shaitan flows mm -hmm. in the son of Adam like blood flows. Um, not, not that one. It's another one. It's, um, it's not that one? It's not that one? No, no. It's, it's the one that's... Mm, okay. Um, it, it's worded kind of, kind of like that. Um, the prophet said, Shaitan flows in the son of Adam like blood flows. Mm -hmm. No, it's the one that says, do not enter the house when your husband is absent. Do not enter do not the enter house? the house. Okay, do not see. enter the home when husband is absent. Do not. I'm, I'm typing it in right now. Do not enter. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. I see about the dogs, you know. The, you know, angels are afraid of the, dogs in Islam. <laughs> the... the Okay, it says if you type these words in the in the search okay, box, do not enter upon do not enter upon Al Mugibard M U G H I B A R. If Mubar? you type that one in there, Mubar? What did you say? Yeah. 
Jabir. Jabir narrated the prophet said, do, do not enter upon Al M U G H I B A R, the women whose husband are absent. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> Jabir narrated. Uh, okay, I think I found it. Oh. Do not enter upon. upon it's from it's from a ther thermody, right? Yeah, Jami the, at yeah, the book yeah. on suckling. The book on suckling. The yeah, chapter, yeah, yeah. even the chapter said, give it away, my friend. Chapter, the warning about do the shaitan flowing through the body, like the flow of blood. I mean, uh, I don't even to, need to translate it. The chapter name already explains it. It says What's the, the warning. Name? Yeah, the the warning about to, that do to the shaitan, the devil, flowing through the body, between brackets, like the flow of blood. So it's like a flow of blood. So 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 he says, is it on your screen right now? It says, do not enter upon Al Mujibar. Yes. Whose husband or indeed the Shaitan flows through one of you yeah. as the blood flow. We yeah. said and you and he said and me, but Allah help, help me over, over him. So, like, yeah. So exactly. what I'm saying, what does it say in Arabic? Is it saying the same thing? Mm -hmm. Or is it more severe in Arabic? In Arabic? Yeah, it's 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 close. It's close. You can you yeah, the translation is okay. You know, not perfect, but it's yeah. That's exactly yeah, I think it's what it says, yeah. 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 So, so it's, okay, yeah. okay, okay. So yeah. so when it says that um and Allah helped me over him. That means there was a period when mm. Allah had not helped him yet. Am I correct? Is it Santa in Arabic? Yes. So that means he was possessed by Satan then? Yeah, of course. Because uh, for, yeah. let's say this hadith is da'if. You know, let's say. But what about, uh, you know, how Muhammad, a black magic spell is cast on him. When we see... Who is the owner? Who is the master of black magic? It's Shaitan. So Muhammad was right. controlled for at least six months by Shaitan. And the owner of black magic is Shaitan. The master of black magic is Shaitan. So yes, Muhammad was being controlled, mind controlled by Satan for six months. That's and true. it says Hassan. That, mean, that means it's good, right? It says Hassan. Hassan, Hassan is good. Yeah. Hassan. Yeah. Okay, good so hadith. it's good. Okay. It's accepted, yes. Yeah. And before I leave, I want to make a, a show request. Um, I had asked you this before. I don't know if you had a chance to get around to it. I'm noticing that there are a lot of Quran verses and hadiths that have, and you and Christian Prince are the ones we can go to. Like you and him, y'all are like the main people. So mm -hmm. it's only right that I ask you this. Like, mm -hmm. can you do a show by request of as many as you can think of of like Quran verses and and hadiths that are translated in English but says something totally different in the Arabic. And can you show like examples of them trying to hide yeah. certain well, my things? Friend, my, fr my friend, we do that every live show. Uh, name any show, if uh, a challenge <laughs> to the Muslims, any live show, <laughs> go, go watch my live shows. Any live show, we show you over and over how they mistranslate, lie in the translation. Pick any show you want. We, 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 we go through many life, uh, sorry, through many Muslim sources over and over showing that Muslim translators lie, use taqiyya, use the maker of Allah himself, the deception of Allah in their translation. And any show, pick any show you want, my friend. So let me ask you a question. They mm -hmm. know, since they know that they have to doctor what it's, why do they, why do they still, you, have you ever thought about that? Like, why would they still promote it and they the ones who can see it and have to hide it well uh i made it's a video cool. my friend let me let me put it this way i made a video before i uploaded a video and we used we had we had to translate it there is a sh sheikh right i let me see if i can find the video pe people can watch it the sheikh clearly on live tv and i think they they later they fired him on live tv saying right without any shame he said our Muslim scholars, he's a scholar himself, all right? He says, our scholars hide more than 90% of what is being said in the Muslim source. More than 90%. Did you catch it, guys? 
more than 90% is being hidden by Imams because they know the moment they are going to show and talk about these sources that they hide, Muslims will leave Islam left and right. So they don't dare to go there. And he's being honest, right? He's being honest. So you said they hide 90% yes. of the hadiths and they don't even put them out yes. to the public? Not only hadith, Quran, everything. They don't dare to talk about these topics because if they're going to bring up these topics, Muslims will leave Islam left and right. They know. Wow. They know. And he's, he's being honest. He's saying it. Our scholars, our Muslim scholars hide more than 90%. Let's see if I can find a video. Uh, so, video, I'm, I'm going to ask yeah. you a question. Do you have any access to like... Arabic hadiths that we don't know about that's not even on sunnah.com but they are considered yeah. like sound yeah, and you can go if there's a really known website it's called Islam web Islam web you can find also there uh, many hadith that are not translated some other hadith that are translated but you can use Google translate it's not going to be accurate of course but if you want to find something that is not translated you can use Google Translate, put the link in Google Translate itself and you will get, you know, a translation out of it. But, you know, it's not very close, but you will have an idea, right? So well, my friend... You, could you do a... Yeah. Can I, well, my last request. Yeah. Can you do a show like going into those hard deeds that we don't, that they don't translate in English and like pull up things sure, that sure. can get them busted even sure, more? Sure. But anyway, yeah, yeah, I appreciate that. And thanks no for problem. having me on. Thank you. Thank you for right. calling, my friends. It's a blessing. Keep calling us. I will. Thank you very much. You too. Thank you. God bless. Uh, guys, let me let me show you the video and then we will wrap it up. OK, let's see. Let me play the video since he brought it up, you know, let's see. I hope I got the correct one. You know, sometimes I myself drown in my own videos, guys, because we have so many videos. We created so many videos. Um, okay, I think I found it. All right. Okay, this is the video, guys. Enjoy. Okay. أنا أشاركك الإجابة هم يكرهونك لأنك تواجههم بما يخفون ويكذبون به على عامة المسلمين واثقون في هذا الأمر كالعادة أن المسلم لن يراجع وراءهم صحيح فيأتي الشيخ وسيم ليراجع وراءهم ويكشف نعم. ثم يقول لماذا يكرهون الشيخ وسيم المسلم يلهث خلف ما يريح ويخدر ضميره لا من يقول له استفق من نومك فعندنا بلاوي يجب أن نعترف بها لنفكر في علاجها لا. هذا ما تفعل أنت ومن يوقز نائما يعني دهرا من الزمن كما تفعل أنت عليه أن يحتمل عصبية آآ آآ ومزاج استيقاظ هذا النائم دهرا لا. كما سبقناك ونحتمل نحتمل الكثير من الكذب والتشويه والشتائم لا مشكلة يجب عليك أن تحتمل ما يعني قلت أنا الآن يوثق الشيخ وسيم في هذا الفيديو الآخر خلينا نشوف أنا آسف قبل ما أشغل الفيديو الثاني لو أنا ما عايزك يعني يعني تبخل علينا بأي تعليق من تعليقاتك الرائعة ماشي شكرا طيب خلينا نشوف فيديو رقم اثنين ونرجع مرة أخرى أنا تربيت بينهم ودرست على أيديهم أنا إنسان تربيت مساجدهم كثير الأمور يخفيها رجال الدين كثيرة موجود عندنا مصائب في كتب الدين والفقه موجودة كثيرة بس هم ما يحبون يناقشون ولا يحبون نعرضها على الناس وإذا عرضتها يقول لك فلان يشكك وإذا عرضتها دقيقة إذا عرضتها يقول لك دقيقة دقيقة إذا عرضتها يقول لك يشكك الناس في الإسلام لا أنا ماشي هذا موجود في كتب الإسلام لما يجيني حديث النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يطوف على نساء التسع وبغسل واحد وتذكره لا تشكك هذا موجود في كتب الإسلام لا تخافون من الناس لا تخافون من الناس ليه Guys did you, did you catch what the sheikh said? Why are you feeding people? It's inside our books yeah, Welcome light for all nations Guys uh, we have a dear brother here 
subscribe to his YouTube channel. He's the one who translated this video, I think. Welcome, my friend. Uh, yeah, I used his video. And you see this name of the Sheikh, Sheikh Wasim Yusuf, Muslim scholar. He's, he's being honest, right? He's, say, he's saying, you know, it's, it's inside our books, but they don't dare to bring up these topics, right? It's in there, in, inside our books. Let's see if that part. Yeah, we a, a lot. We have we have a lot of disasters in the Islamic righteous books. Is there uh, is there and a lot, but they hide, they hide it. Right? They don't like to discuss the scholars. They don't like to discuss, right, these topics because many Muslims will leave, right? They will leave Islam. Guys, thank you for watching. I mean, uh, you know, I like to stay with you for many hours, to be honest with you. But, you know, <clears throat> we are live for a long time now. My voice is gone. Th guys, thank you so much for your support. Because of you, we can keep doing what we do. Download our videos, guys. Thank you for your support. God bless you. God bless your families. Don't forget to subscribe to our social media, to Facebook. And if you want to support our live, live shows, our ministry, full-time ministry, you can do that on Patreon. God bless you. We, today we showed you that Islam is nothing but a man-made cult. We went through some scientific miracles in the Quran and we busted them we spanked Muhammad and his lies we showed you that according to the Quran bees poop honey chapter 16 ayah 69 chapter 16 ayah 69 according to the Quran bees poop out honey you, you must be an idiot to believe in the lies of Muhammad in his Quran there's something wrong with you if you still believe in that nonsense Muslims, you need to think. Drop Muhammad. Leave Muhammad. He's nothing but a liar. Today we prove that again for you. Don't be stupid. Don't stay a fool and put your salvation on the line because of one man and one man alone who created Islam for his own sexual desires. And Aisha knew. Aisha knew her husband is nothing but a scammer. She said, Ma ara rabbuka illa yusara bihawaka ya Muhammad. I see that your Lord hastens to fulfill your desires, i.e. your sexual desires, Muhammad. She knew. She knew. Guys, thank you for watching. Muslims, drop Muhammad. Come, come back home to your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you for watching, guys. Lord willing, we will see each other again in a future live show. Thanks for your support. Download our videos and God bless.